Hello, hello. How are we all doing today? Uh, this is Darren here from Watercolor Mentor and just doing one of my weekday streams again. And I hope if you can hear me, if you're, you're watching, um, just uh, put something in the in the chat. So I know it's a bit of a, a funny time for some of you guys over in the States. And um, I did make a little mistake as well with this stream. I scheduled it um, for it to, to be at 1 a.m. Uh, yesterday when it should have been today. So apologies for those of you who were there and, and sort of um, tuning in. But I um, thought I'd sort of go through a few things in this stream, in this video, and uh, I was going to make some additional videos and, you know, just record it on my other camera, put it on um, a separate video, edit it, but I thought this would just be a lot easier um, if I just do it sort of this way, sort of a few, you know, cover a few different topics. And given that it is Inktober as well, I think it's a really good time to sort of go through um, a few pen drawing tips, some of my, um, you know, just a, a few, few little things that I think will help you out in your your sort of pen and wash um, drawings and illustrations. Um, this is a sketchbook that I've used. I think it's got about... I don't know how many pages I think it has about 25 pages so about maybe 50 uh, 50 pages back in front and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm um, just going to be going over um, what's inside uh, how I've um, you know some of the um, I guess reflections I've, I've had on some of the pieces I've done so um, if you have any questions just let me know um, yeah, just let me know um, during the stream. I'm also going to do a couple of demonstrations afterwards as well. I've never tried these two scenes before, but I'm going to give it a go and um, see how how it turns out. Um, so we've got a, a chat from Paint with Mirthal. Uh, sorry, Paint with Murthy. So glad to be here again. Thanks for, for joining at such short notice. And... Um, and uh, I, I hope that um, this will be sort of beneficial for you. But um, if you have any questions um, or even afterwards, if you're watching sort of afterwards, just let me know. So this is a 25 page sketchbook that I, I got from Etcher some time ago in the past. And um, I've managed to finish it all off. The first couple of pages were just um, little little bits of, of drawings here. Just, uh, I guess this was, what was this here? I think this was some kind of, exercise that I was showing you guys online how to paint figures and get some sort of ones that are lighter in the distance to make it look like they're further back. Uh, so I, I really love sketchbooks. They just allow you to, uh, I, yeah, I guess, you, you know, draw and paint without any pressure of, of um, you, you know, them having to look like a masterpiece. And I, I mean, I don't even really worry if I get, get a large bit of, you know, separate watercolor paper to do that anyway. But um, you know, I've always been encouraging everyone to use a sketchbook, even if you just pick up a, a cheap one or you make your own. Um, they're really good to sort of uh, get you in the mood to to uh, draw and to paint. Um, very little that you need to do. You don't need to tape down any paper or anything like that. So um, uh, Tanya, Tanya W, cool to see an evening live. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Tanya. And um, good to see you as well. It's a it's um you know I had some feedback and I've you know a couple of people asked me to go through my sketchbook uh, and just a few tips and and you know I'm going to do some demonstrations as well so if you have questions uh, just let me know but thanks uh, for joining Tanya so over on this right hand side these are just a few uh, small sketches that I did I think these took about five to maybe about five minutes each maybe a little bit longer. Um, really just to test out some of the colors um, and more importantly test out the performance of the paper so nothing too special here this page here it's a little bit more a little bit more vibrant and done a lighthouse scene here these are based on two reference photos that I thought I'd simplify simplify down and uh, what I really like about these is that they were just done in a really spontaneous manner. I didn't think too much about the composition other than, um, yeah, just a you know light sort of sky and some of the darkness on the buildings. 
some of the shadows, something really quick to sort of get me into, into painting. I think I used a, a limited palette for this and painted almost directly onto the paper without any sort of mixing. So uh, yeah, that, that one turned out okay. Um, you know, not too bad for a first couple of sketches. These two uh, I did a little bit later on. So that's Venice. And we've got a, you know, here we go, a little window car scene. I think this was based on a reference picture um, from France. So I didn't mind this. I used pigment liners. So these ones here, these little pigment liners. Um, so they, they kind of, if you look at the lines, they just have a bit more of a rough texture and it skips over the paper. Um, same with these here as well. Um, some Venice, a couple of Venice scenes. And I think this is, yeah, this is Burano actually. And I've, again, I've used these pigment liners and which give it a slightly different style. These days, I tend to be using all of the, uh, these pens here. So these uniball, uniball pens, which are basically just a ballpoint tip and a bit of liquid ink in there. Um, so these turned out, these turned out okay. Um, I probably, I probably would have put less detail and fussed less around the buildings. Um, but the sky I really like. So what I did was that I wet the sky first with some clean water and then I dropped in the paint. And that's how you get this um, sort of you know, soft patchy kind of look in areas. And if you go over to this side, you'll see I haven't done that there. I've just basically put that cerulean blue straight in and, you can, and it has a more or less of a, a flat wash. So a couple of different techniques there. And I do like this one a bit better. I think trying out uh, different techniques in your sketchbook is always a great idea. Little techniques here, nothing nothing really to, to, to look at. Um, this is a scene uh, of... I think it's, it's a France to street scene, and I've used these pens here. So again, these uniball pens, and you can tell the difference. The lines just look a lot more sort of crisp, and um, you know, compared to these ones over here, which just they almost um, blend in with the paper a little bit more. Whereas these look, um, yeah, just quite strong. The the lines, and they show through a lot more visibly after you've done the watercolors but i really like this one i didn't take all too long to draw it and um the secret to this was that i just looked at the buildings all as one big shape and i remember just drawing this one down there that's going over the top and sort of um, doing this set of buildings at the end but it's basically this sort of pattern almost like a zigzag pattern and then in that large shape i put in the small windows and things like that so Quite happy with how that one turned out. Actually, and I've used that same sort of um, technique here, where I've dropped in a bit of paint um, while the paper was still wet, so you can get a bit of a softer looking uh, sky, a um, little bit more convincing, I, I think, doing it this way. So, not bad. Um, here are a few more little sketches that I've done in the um, as well. So these two were very quick. I think I did them in about probably 10 minutes, um, including the drawings, the drawing and the painting, 10 minutes each. And, you know, these type of sketches are great to sort of map out, um, you know, generally speaking, where the, the what colors you want to use and um, areas of light and shadow. It's not for, for really, um, you know, sussing out all the little details and everything like that. In fact, this one is almost, it's the same as this one here, as you can see, and that's the watercolor version. And then over here, we've got the um, the line and wash version. I like this one a, a bit better. There's um, details are just more refined there. Um, you know, I also use these to get in, like I said before, just uh, indication of where the shadows are. It's really important as well, um, almost as a planning stage to your painting. Sometimes, you know, a reference picture, it's not going to have any shadows in it and you're going to have to, um, figure out or just imagine a, a light source coming from the right, the left, um, what have you. So that's something that I've tried to do here. Um, so moving moving on, um, and I'll just check the chats quickly. If you're out there and you are um, watching, I know there's not too many. Yeah, there's there's a you know it's in the middle of the probably in the, the middle of the morning, early morning for a lot of you guys. So. Um, Helena, Helena, uh, Helena Felek. Um, hi, Darren, Helena here, and loving watching you and doing your tutorials. 
Thank you, Helena, and um, happy that you're you're enjoying them, and um, you know you're, you're getting some 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 uh, tips and um, advice out of these out of these uh, lives. So I'm always happy to answer questions and things like that as well. Uh, it's good fun. I, I love sort of just going through my thought process. And initially, I thought perhaps I was talking a bit too much, rambling on, because I, I can do that at times. Uh, you know, if no one stops me. So, but it, but it seems like you guys enjoy um, listening to what I have to say. And uh, yeah, if if you do feel that there there's something I haven't covered, just let me know, and um, I'll get back to you. So. These two here, I actually, I really like these because they only took me about, I think the drawing took me about 15 minutes um, for each one. That one may, may be a little bit uh, shorter, but the painting was very, very quick. I, I did these roughly about 15, 20 minutes um, for each painting. And you can see how it just creates um, just a, a more, uh, I guess, a sporadic sort of look to the to, to the paint and it looks a little bit fresher. Even here, I really like how I've done these shrubs and things coming in from the side of the building. I think this is somewhere in Italy, yeah, some, somewhere in Italy. And um, no, normally I, I tend to put in a, a few different washes. I'll add in all the lighter bits and then I'll put in the darker bits afterwards. I like how that one's turned out. This one here, this um, little scene of, of um, London, Big Ben, I think this one's worked out nicely, just uh, planning out and getting those shadows running across like that. I, the, the building in the background, the, um, the clock tower looks probably a little bit lighter. I would have darkened that a bit. And same with this uh, this little bus here. I probably would have darkened a bit more to the left-hand side of it. Um, but apart from that, I, I like it, especially like the sky, using that same uh, sort of technique as well. So... If you like getting in the soft skies and uh, clouds, remember just wet that paper first and you're kind of leaving little areas of white. So here there's some white here, here. Um, and then I just drop in that blue, pick up some gray, so mix up all those primary colors and just drop those in. And you, you're able to get in this uh, soft sort of feel. Um, it's very tempting to just keep going back into it, changing here and there, but um, yeah. Put in a few bits and pieces and let it do its um, let let it do the work by itself. It's um, pretty it's it's pretty uh, straightforward once you've got the colours in there. Um, Nerida, hi, watching here from Sydney. I like the Paris scenery. Thanks, Nerida. And uh, I you know one thing I really like about uh, I guess these buildings from from Paris and and from from Italy they just have such um, I don't know. I just I'm always I've always been interested in drawing buildings. I, I don't know why it's it's just the the ge those geometric shapes they just um, really interest me. So and there's there's a excess and um, a large supply of those over there. Sort of old buildings, um, and I think they just look really beautiful. So moving on, I'm gonna just squeeze through a few more pages. Uh, we're not even halfway through, and I don't want to blab on for too long. So here's a, these are a couple of scenes that I've picked out from Prague. And, you know, I often use photographs as well that I take when I'm traveling. And obviously these days we can't really travel. Um, but if you've got some old photographs of, um, you know, some of your previous travels, you can pull them out and use those as a reference. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfect photograph as well. You can just change it around and, um, Pretty much, um, pretty much change change the photograph around to, to what you want to represent. So, I mean, this photograph, I think it was a lot wider, and I just cut it down um, to more of a portrait style orientation. Um, this one here as well to sort of emphasize the height of that building. I was playing around with some of these shadows, and um, again, these took not very long to paint, and the drawing took a lot, you know, a lot longer, probably thirty minutes each. Um, a bit less, 30, 25, 30 minutes each for the drawing and the painting, probably another 15 minutes each. So really with the painting, you're just trying to um, get in light and shadow and just some, some colors in there. A lot of the drawing, uh, the details are already uh, put in there with the pen. So um, Tanya, uh, can't help but notice now how the top of the heads are pretty much the same height like you mentioned on Saturday. 
Yeah, so, um, you know, with the heads being the same height, essentially, if, if you want to imply a, a completely flat scene, that, that's what you want to do. If you want to imply sort of, um, you know, the ground is flat, if, if you've got heads that are sort of moving up and further up into the distance, it will imply that we're, we're moving up a hill. So it really depends on the scene that you're doing. I know some people change it up. I sometimes just change it up as well um, to what I think, um, you know, I want to portray. But uh, that's probably the most simplest way to to do it. And most streets, I think street scenes that you're painting and drawing, that you know, it's going to be fairly flat. Uh, this here is a little sketch that I did of Venice. Um, I didn't really like this one. I, I thought it was overworked in areas. Uh, it looked better when I had drawn it. Um, you know, some of these shadows are just a little bit too harsh as well. So the, the entire scene is almost a little too dark. If I were to paint this again, um, I would definitely keep in mind uh, just to make these shadows a little bit lighter um, and maybe draw a bit more contrast with some of these figures here in the in the front, preserve more of that light. I mean, I've got some of that here, um, some on top of the umbrella um, here in the in the corner, but overall, I think I've I've done this a little bit too a little too dark. But the drawing has gone okay, and I think um, you know I did learn a lot from from doing this one. Same sort of sky here, wet and wet. Um, little figure sketches here. I think I was explaining um, the sort of. Now I remember here, this is this is where I was going through the head height. Uh, so basically, the head should fit into the body. Um, to the entire figure about seven and a half to eight times. So that's how you tell, it, you know, if you've got a, a you know, the, the right size for a figure. But again, it really depends. On, that's more of like an adult figure based on an average. Um, you know, I do figures all, of all different sizes as well. So that's a little um, a sketch of Murano, I think. Murano or Burano. I always get confused between those those two, and I think they're quite... Um, you know, they're next to each other. So um, this was a this was a sketch that I did probably my second second live, and I was a bit nervous when I was doing this one. And uh, as I'd you know, with the, some of the shadows and some of the colors on the buildings, I I allowed them to mix a bit, but it's turned out okay for a quick little sketch. I managed to get some shadows in here as well. Um, you know, I tend to. You know, I'm a lot more uh, really getting a lot more comfortable with doing these um, live and answering questions as before. I think when you when you're doing everything live and you're trying to paint, it's um, you know, especially for me, multitasking with this stuff at the start. It was it was a big challenge, that's for sure. Especially when the the stream would uh, sometimes disconnect. But that's when all right, I finished that one off. So like I always say, you if you finish it. Um, you know, if you make it to the end, you know, even if it doesn't work out as an actual uh, piece, you don't you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, there's so many things that I, I would have done better. Um, at least you finished it and you learned that lesson. I always go through and I try to find something. What did I like about the piece? What did I like about it? And what could I sort of improve for, for next time? And um, it's, you know, trying not to be too harsh on yourself because, you know, a lot of the time we're, we're our own worst uh, critics and, um, you know, we, especially when we've drawn and painted this entire scene, we can see where we made all our mistakes and things that we can improve on. But it's important to not get caught on that and um, to think of it more as, OK, that's something I want to work on for next time. So, for example, uh, maybe that figure, I'll, I'll you know work on that a bit more of the detail of that figure for next time, and uh, especially some of the roofs of these of these houses as well. So, um, little learning lesson there. This was a sketch that I did before the other marketplace scene. Um, I did this really quickly. Uh, I think um, you can see here. I've just really scribbled in all these circles here for all the the um, bananas and the sorry the bananas the the um, grapes and whatever they are, the oranges, potatoes on the ground, that sort of stuff here. And um, I just wanted to had an idea of what I wanted to put on the paper. And I started around about here where, where we had all the umbrellas. Um, I wanted to change that up to see if the umbrellas would work. 
So sometimes a little sketch like this is always good. You don't have to um, drag out a huge bit of paper and stress yourself out and think, you know, you've got to get it right this time. Um, you know, start with something small if you're not sure about a composition, give it a try there. And if it works, then apply that idea to a larger scene. So I, I really like this one. And, and funny enough, I like the sketch more than the actual uh, painting that I did live. I just thought it had a bit more, bit more stuff going on. Um, so this is another real quick one I did, um, and somewhere in Italy as well. Really, really quick. And uh, for for this one, I tried not to kind of lift the pen. I was just trying something different to to get in most of these lines. Um, with that, yeah, basically just trying to join up all the shapes. So it's it's got an interesting sort of sort of look. It's probably be a bit too dark here on the ground, um, but you know, it's always good. To experiment, I think I might have been trying to get in a nighttime uh, scene, but I couldn't decide. I mean, the sky should be a lot darker if it's a nighttime scene, anyway. Um, oh, so over here, um, this is the other one. It's the 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 one that I did live, and uh, I spent a bit more time, as you can see, just drawing in these little shapes of the the, the oranges and the bananas, all that kind of stuff here. Some of the figures. So um, it's definitely a little bit more refined, and I have preserved that sort of sketchy feel to it. Um, but with that said, I, I still like that other one. I still like this other one more. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Or do they look pretty much the same to you? It's always interesting to hear what people perceive as... Uh, well, everyone's got their own preferences, I suppose. So, yeah, this is another one. Little scene here. It's a, a townhouse scene in Washington, uh, Washington DC. Um, I think I got this idea. Someone, um, yes, yeah, someone in the comments asked me to do uh, like a, a set of townhouses. So um, I gave this one a, a go. Um, put that in some course that I did. This one's upside down. Um, I don't know why I did this one upside down. Uh, I think I just had the the. Um, I don't know really what I was doing. I think I, yeah. Anyway, just a little sketch, and I posted this one on YouTube, actually. Um, uh, you know, it was initially just a hot dog stand, a pretzel stand, sorry, and it was just a guy here behind the, pet, the, the, um, the pretzel stand, and I thought, geez, you know, how can I make this more interesting? Because initially I just wanted to put in, uh, you know, the, the person, the pretzel stand, that's it, but I just couldn't help put in a few more bits and pieces and it ended up turning out like this. So sometimes starts with something small and then it just turns into something else. This figure here, I don't really like how it looks. Um, it kind of interrupts the rest of the scene because it's too dark. It should be almost as dark as this side of the uh, wagon thingo that he's serving uh, the pretzels from, hot dogs from. Um, I just overworked this this figure and I with the drawing, uh, you know, I could have been a bit more... Um, a bit more accurate there. So apart from that, I, I really like it, um, especially these birds here. I know some of them are pretty big, but that's practice as well, just going through, drawing the birds. Uh, just coming back over to this side, another one, just a little um, house scene like that. There we go, and that's the London sort of scene, and I, I like this one as well better than the one that I did live. I think. Um, just going into it so quickly and preserving that light at the end. Um, I quite like that. It does need a bit more refining and the, the line work is a bit, um, you know, it's a bit loose, a uh, lot looser than I, than I usually uh, go through doing, but that's, um, you know, that's what it ended up, what it ended up like. And it helped me to plan what I was going to do for the, um, the one later. So this one here. Uh, geez, where is this? I think it's somewhere in Amsterdam. I, I just like these these buildings, and uh, this is the one I really like. This one on the right hand side, this sort of pink um, kind of color, and you know I've got some blue for the windows. Really nice scene, um, beach scene here. I've done this one a bit differently. I've added a frame, and when you add that frame, um, it just 
somehow, uh, I don't know, it just brings um, more of a focus in it and it gives a different appeal, even with a bit of the house here, a bit of this, this beach house sort of jutting out the edge, um, still looks still looks okay. And I did this one in preparation for uh, one of the beach scenes I did live. So um, yeah, one of the things to keep in mind for this is, is to keep everything pretty light. Um, and initially when you're painting, you know, watercolors, you, you want to, you, you know, you want to keep things light because, uh, so especially if you've got, you know, an area of sunlight um, coming through, you don't want to go too dark because that's going to um, make all your other colors later. You're going to have to adapt and make them darker. So often watercolors look pretty washed out when you're first getting into it. And you're, um, yeah, just trying to put in a few background colors, bit of the sky, bit of the, um, uh, a bit of the sand, you pop in those colors and it just looks all washed out. But you have to wait till the next stage to add in some of the darker colors and then um, it will just look a lot better and um, the, the light will pop out of the page. It's really amazing how it surprises me each time. Little house um, scene here. You know, I know some of you guys have asked for Halloween scenes, uh, you know, it wasn't intentional, but I think this looks, someone said this looks like a witch's house or something. Where's the other one? Yeah, this one as well. So <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't just pick a a more conventional looking house, but but these looked interesting to me. So um, I tried to try to, to um, draw and paint these for a course. So um, and they both turned out all right. And it's always good to challenge yourself with, uh, buildings that you don't normally um, draw or paint. Um, it's going to give you that practice for a bit later. And especially if you're trying to draw this and then you try to later draw a more simplified house, you're going to have no issues at all if you can draw that kind of thing. So simplifying things down, triangle, rectangle, rectangle, you know, that's a rectangle on its side, you know, triangle here. So another triangle on top. That's how I sort of look at it when I'm drawing. It's the only way that I can... Uh, stop myself from being overwhelmed by uh, the complexity and details. Um, here's another one I did live. Um, so I really preferred this other one. The where is it? The other London scene here. Um, I preferred this one over this one actually. Um, the colors. I think I've put in a, a lot of um, interesting colors in here. Sort of red, purpley sort of um, colors. I've preserved some light on there. Um, but this one, I, I just, I like that color combination a lot better. So, but the drawing, the drawing worked out nicer. Um, so it's, you know, sometimes it ends up like that. Um, but I did add in some of these reflections that turned out quite nicely. Um, next time I, you know, if I was to do this again, I'd spend a bit more time um, here and um, basically just start drawing in uh, a bit more detail for, for the Big Band and the, just the clock tower. Um, I've made a mistake here as well. So it should be um, sort of wider around where the clock face is and then the building sort of tapers in a little bit um, further down. So um, it's really important to be able to, and you, know, you don't need to tell anyone, but it's more, you know, after you finish a painting, just review it, have a look at it and think to yourself, um, objectively, you know, what do you like about it um, and, and what could you sort of work on for, for next time? I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to improve, um, you know, or the, my process in improving because um, practice itself is really important. And um, But being able to actually identify areas that you can work on and um, for example, you, you might have um, issues just with drawing figures. It's just not working out for you. So you might think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm aware of that, and I might just do a, a whole sheet of just figures, just drawing figures all over the place, um, and that will help to to build your confidence in drawing them for next time. So being being conscious and sort of introspective, um, and and you, you know. I always like to take constructive feedback as well, um, but at the same time, I think you can learn to do that your, yourself and um, and um, and work on your artwork. So, Tanya, Tanya's comment: um, the second London one looks later in the day. Yeah, it's it's definitely um, it's definitely like a, a nighttime kind of scene that I was trying to do. 
but uh, I think with the sky, it's just too light. So, you know, I could probably go over it again and try to fiddle around with things here or there, but uh, I, th I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it. Um, yeah, it was a, kind of that, you know, that, that funny time before the sun sets. Um, yeah. Were you in this one? Were you in this one, Tanya? I'm not sure. I can't remember if you were watching, um, watching back then. But uh, he gave, if he ended up giving that one a go. So a few more here. This is another one that I did uh, live. This is Dubrovnik. Someone asked me to do a scene of Dubrovnik. And, and there we go. And this one I, I actually like. This figure here in the foreground, the, um, the dress here of, of, um, this, of the lady just having that light come in from the right-hand side to preserve that blue and then add it in some darkness to the left-hand side. So I really like how I've, I've done that, the, you know, the shadows all coming over to the left. I probably would have altered the shadows a bit and, and make, instead of going straight to the left, I would have gone left downwards to make it look a bit more interesting. Uh, that one there is, is nice, sort of left a gap in between the, the feet um, for the shadow to, to come through. Here on this side, um, you know, I made up this this uh, little boy here standing uh, next to this wall and the shadow here. So I'm quite happy with how that that one turned out. Another little scene here. I think it's somewhere out, um, yeah, somewhere out in the Midwest. I can't remember what, what town this was. I was playing around with shadows. This is sort of darkness under here. Probably... This, the, these shadows are a tad too dark. The, the contrast in them are a little too dark. So I, I would have, next time, I'd probably aim to get it more like this shadow here underneath. We look that dark is just a little more transparent and lighter than these ones here. So uh, sometimes it's really hard to gauge um, which, which actual, um, you know, how it's going to dry, how the watercolor is going to dry, right? Tanya, uh, no, only last week. Fantastic. It was good to good to have you. Um, and some noises coming around from, from my apartment around the corner. Um, and and if uh, you know there are some challenges going on at the moment. The recent one, obviously, being Inktober. So, um, what are you guys doing? Are you is anyone giving Inktober a, a go this year? I think, um, look, I, I didn't do it this year because I tried last year. I got up to about the fifth, I think the fifth or the seventh day, and it just, um, I just wasn't enjoying it, the, the prompts, and I was trying to make a video every day as well. I think that probably contributed to me um, sort of burning out through it. But Inktober is a really good sort of exercise. Even if you don't do it every day, you can sort of do it once every now and then, and, uh, you know, once every three days or so, and it, you know, keeps you accountable, keeps you practicing. Um, really quick beach sketch here. Um, that was a pre-planning one. This one here was a scene that um, that we did live. I think this was the second live. Uh, sorry, not the second live. It would have been the sixth or so. Um, well, since I restarted some of the live streams. So I like the shadows. And, and these. this is what I'm talking about. That sort of... Um, darkness in the shadows is the right um, amount so that it doesn't stick out too much not too much uh, contrast um some figures here i think that's worked out quite nicely there we go another beach scene and uh did that one live we've also um well, we've also got this scene here i did this one i actually went outside and sketch this one on site. And I keep telling everyone it's such a good way to to actually learn because you're, you know, you you, you really um, have no you really have no choice but to draw quite quickly. A lot of the time, you know, you look at a scene and um, you know people are walking across the road and you just have to draw it in really quickly. The things that they're wearing, maybe some props, uh, bags, a bicycle, and stuff. Because sooner or later, what happens is that the sun starts to set. These people disappear. So it really gives you a sense of urgency and, and you do get more of this kind of, um, I, I guess this kind of loose, free kind of style looking um, drawing. So 
Um, I, I quite like how I've done this car as well here. Simplified, but you know, effective. Um, yeah, this is in this is in Carlton, so uh, over in in Melbourne. Uh, for those of you guys in um, in Melbourne or over in Australia, this is Carlton. Um, what is it? Carlton Gardens Exhibition Centre. I was just looking across the road, saw a bunch of people sitting sitting here, and um, you know, guys smoking, and these these people were sort of talking and sort of getting along, having a bit of fun, and I thought this was a nice one to draw. Um, there's a question, a question from Felicity, Felicity Lynch, uh, Bryn, which brands do you recommend, please? Uh, so in terms of, in terms of brands, um, do you, do you mean sort of, uh, oh, well, maybe I'll go through everything. So paper wise, um, it doesn't make a huge difference as long as you've got hundred percent cotton watercolor paper. Um, what, yeah, so 100% cotton watercolor paper. There are a few manufacturers. Um, this, there's uh, Saunders Waterford. So uh, there's Archers. What, what else is there? I think um, Canton also have a 100% uh, cotton brand as well. That's, I haven't used that. There's Fabriano, uh, which is 100% cotton. Um, this stuff here, I'm not sure what it is. This comes, this is an etcher, uh, what they call uh, an etcher sketchbook that I got. Uh, they sent this to me for free. Um, and basically, um, yeah, basically it's, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it's, it's hundred percent cotton and it's in medium texture, cold meat, cold pressed to medium texture. It just allows you to get in these, uh, Flat wash is a bit better. When you're using a paper that has a hot press or really smooth type of feel to it, you find that the water actually pulls in places and it's hard for you to get softer effects. It dries faster, more inconsistently as well. Um, it, it can be difficult, very challenging for, for new uh, watercolorists to, yeah, to basically work with hot press paper. So I always recommend, especially for landscapes, just pick up a, pick up some uh, medium cold press paper. Um, yeah, so it's it's rather than the brand, it's just more the quality of it that's important. The brushes I use are just a bunch of synthetic brushes. Um, I got those sent to me for free as well from Zen Art Supplies, but you know you can also get them from you know any any art supply store. Just um, a set of synthetic brushes. Just make sure you have a have a have one that's large enough to do these big washes. I find with synthetic brushes. Um, the, it's a bit hit and miss with how much water that they can pick up. So make sure you've got a big one. So at least you know, big round brush or a big flat brush, so you can get in those larger washes. Um, synthetics, uh, they work really well, and uh, they've come a long way. Here we go. Just uh, I think we've talked about that. A couple other sketches I did here as well in person. I was sitting outside, and I did this sketch. I did this one here as well. Um, you know, and I add, added these ducks later because I thought that there was just something missing here in the foreground. So that's the um, exhibition center, the Carlton Exhibition Center in the background. There was a girl with a basketball under her arm and talking to a guy over there. And uh, there was a lady who just sort of, she was initially sitting like this and she turned around and sat over here. So I sort of just drew her in in two different positions. But um make it look like it was two different people so there we go that's another beach scene that i did live um here we have another scene of uh, i'm not sure where this is it's just a reference picture i got online so it was more of like um a, a down you know imagining that we had a, a camera or something on the ground looking up um so a bunch of figures bit of practice there uh, another one here that I've done uh, that I did live, and I use pigment liners for um, for this one. And uh, the, the main thing that you have to remember is with pigment liners, they tend to have a lighter touch, so they're a bit more forgiving. If you're just starting out drawing, uh, pigment liners can be really good because when you, um, I guess, when you, you touch that onto the paper, it skips over some areas. It doesn't completely soak in um this has a different look and almost you can almost um cover over it with the watercolors if you go dark enough 
Um, the paints that I use, they're, they're all artist grade watercolor paints. Um, the main thing, and I've talked about this a few times as well, the main thing is, um, yeah, just to just to pick uh, whether you want granulating or non-granulating paints. Some manufacturers specialize more with granulating paints like Daniel Smith. So um, granulating just means that the, the texture of the paint, um, the, the little uh, granules of paint, they sort of dry and you can see them and they're visible in patches and um, just areas. Where, so instead of it being completely smooth, uh, I think the reason why that is is that they just grind the particles to um, slightly larger sizes um, so that when it, uh, yeah, it basically just collects and is more visible to the to the eye. Um, I, I use a combination of both, but these days I, I've mainly got non-granulating pigments only because um, I've got a whole set of them and, and that's just what I use. I do have other paints as well, like my... Now this one here, uh, my main palette, the Schmincke palette, but I've got, you know, I think I've got three different paint, paint brands in here. I've got Schmincke, I've got Daniel Smith, um, I've got Art Spectrum, I've got Magello. Um, yeah, so I've got all different brands in there. It doesn't make a huge difference as long as they're artist-grade watercolor paints. You don't also need this many colors. This is way too much. You just need, uh, you know, a yellow, a blue, and a red to start off with. If you've got a cool and warm version of those primaries, you, you're completely fine. You don't have to um, have a whole bunch of uh, colors like, like this. As you can see, I barely use some of them here. Um, and, that, and in fact, I just use them because they're there at times. So, um, Tanya, question from Tanya. Do people look at you weird when you, when you live sketch? Yes, uh, people, sometimes people stop and, and, you know, it's initially I was a bit sort of um, uncomfortable with that <laughs> because you're trying to concentrate and uh, yeah, sometimes people come up to you and, and uh, just want to see what you're doing or they want to have a chat. These days I'm completely fine with it and happy to have a chat, but back then I think I was, um, yeah, definitely a bit self-conscious going out there, especially in a, a super public area. So, you know, if you're in a cafe or something like that, you're behind a table um, or, you know, you might be sitting down uh, in a park or something like that. I find that's a lot easier because you, you can, one, you can concentrate because there's no one around you um, and not too many people sort of approach you and things like that. So you might want to get started doing that, um, but really, really shouldn't bother too much. If you want to go out and sketch, um, just give it a go. I think that's a really good um, uh, it's, it's a really good teacher just sketching from um, what's what you see and here's another one I think this is a Venice beach and I liked how this one turned out I want to do a larger figure here in the foreground person here with a bit of a bit of a mohawk you know, I like that like that figure and um, you know some of these guiding lines going through the scene as well I really liked um, how I did those to sort of, I don't know, add a sense of depth and and a three dimensional feel to the scene. Just a few lines on the ground does that. It's amazing. Uh, so um, continue on. And what about you, Tanya? Did have you, yeah, have you done a bit of sketching outside, or you mostly indoors? Um, and facility very helpful. Thank you. No, not a problem. This is another one I did live. Um, yeah, just a really quick sort of house on a hill kind of sketch. It, you know, if you guys are looking for Halloween ideas, you can probably make this um, a little bit scarier. And then, you know, these branches here, I put them in. So it started, people were saying it looked like a scary kind of scary house on a hill. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can focus on putting a few more darks in there, maybe some cracks and some bricks and things like that. Few bats, you know, these could be bats flying around. Um, I like that, just a you know, really quick sketch and being able to focus on just one thing, just focus on this house because normally I have too much going on. Um, and it goes to show sometimes having too many things in there is actually a hindrance. Um, more simple compositions work very well. There we go, here's talking about complex. Um, 
got another one, another one here, and uh, yeah, basically uh, a few people walking around, light source coming in from the back. Where is this? I think, I think this is somewhere in the UK. I think it's somewhere in the UK. I can't remember, but I wanted to use this to practice and um, go through. Uh, figures, so um, drawing different figures, and I found this was a great little exercise um, to do that, and um, also the shadows here on the ground. And oh, yeah, Melbourne lockdown. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Um, it's getting it's it's dragging on, isn't it? And I, I know people are going out exercising and stuff like that, but even you know, I'm I'm just sort of at home. Fair bit. I feel like even when I go outside, there's not all that much, all that much to to do. Um, went I went uh, for a little ride, a scooter, like a kick scooter. Um, I live in the city. I went for a little ride around to the um, library the other day, and just to do a bit of exercise. And I sat down, and a couple of police officers came up to me, and they were asking, "What are you doing? You know, what are you?" Uh, you know, you know um, do you have a permit, this and that, you know, and that's just, uh, so anyway, ended up, ended up walking back. Um, so we'll move on, Let's have a look, what else do we have here? We've got a, this scene more recently, this Venice um, scene here of, where is it? Uh, San Giorgio Maggiore, San Giorgio. People ask me, why do I? always go back to Venice painting and drawing Venice it's just um, I don't know it's just beautiful and I find that there's so much inspiration to draw from in terms of buildings I love drawing buildings um, the lamps and just these little props and things like that um, yeah I just I just find it really exciting to to sort of draw these type of scenes um, really quick one here little cafe scene I think this one was um, this one was done okay, but a bit loose. Um, I probably would have spent a bit uh, a bit more time, maybe focusing it closer as well. I've tried to get too much in, um, but I think it's worked okay. It's it's um, yeah, I like the green and also some of the shadows, but I probably would reduce these shadows down a little bit and kept um, some of the light behind there as well. Okay, this was just last week, and I think some of you have already seen this one, uh, the Santorini scene I did. I was quite happy with that. Did a few practice sketches beforehand as well to uh, familiarize myself with some of the shapes, especially of this dome. Um, these stairs were a bit of a nightmare, so... Um, sort of got my head around that, and we've got a little sketch here. Um, this one, this is of a uh, street scene somewhere in New York, I think it is. So I've used pigment liners for these, this set of pigment liners, and again, you can see the difference: pigment liners and um, just the normal ballpoint liners here. Um, the lines just look a lot more defined, almost like a coloring book style. Whereas if you look over on this side, um, the lines skip over the paper in some places. That the ink is also slightly a little bit lighter. So I find if you if you're looking to I guess um, have more of a balance between the watercolors and the ink, um, the pigment liners work really well with that because um, you you. If you're using these pens, you just got to be careful that you're leaving enough of um, enough space in here for you to get in the watercolors. Otherwise, um, those lines will, will look a bit um, a bit too strong. So, interesting kind of observation. What have I got here? Um, geez, got a couple of little sketch scenes. I think this was when, I know what this is, the little uh, scenes that I did because, uh, you know, before the Venice live scene that, uh, if, I don't know if you guys were, were there, but I did, did a Venice live scene as well. So this was just a, a couple of sketches I did, um, compositional sketches. So I've used this thing, use it for everything. And that is basically, that is basically it. 
Um, I'm going to check the chats. Paint with uh, Myrtle says, the work is so beautiful. I'm inspired to do more plain air. Thanks, th thanks, Myrtle. And, you know, if you ever get a chance to go out and um, you know, it doesn't even have to be very far, it could just be across the road. I was listening to a podcast today um, with one of my favorite artists, Joseph Zabukovic, and he, you know, he, he just goes around the corner from where he lives a couple of streets, um, a couple of streets down, and he sits there and he does his painting, obviously. Um, <laughs> It, it takes a bit of bravado to pull out that um, that easel and just set up on the on the um, on the sidewalk where people are uh, hanging around. But honestly, if you if you do it a few times, you'll be surprised um, how easy it is afterwards. It's more the first few times you feel a bit sort of um, at times a bit bit nervous doing it, and uh, people watching. Um, I don't know if you end up getting like that. I certainly got like that. I felt a bit. Uh, yeah, I felt a bit self-conscious and kind of put off by people people there, like I was just nervous. But after a while, you kind of realize it's like anything else. You know, when you, you know, say if I trip over and fall in public or even something like that, no one even really cares. They're too busy with their own stuff to even look at what you're doing. And when they do, when they do it's just more out of curiosity. So, um, you, you know, really recommend that, um, Myrtle, if you, if you can get out there and draw and um you know get you know also get a bit of fresh air and and uh, which is very healthy so i hope you're whereabouts are you based myrtle um hopefully you're not you guys aren't in lockdown or uh, i'm not sure if you're if you're in um australia or not but if you're able to get out it's I definitely recommend it tanya are the pigment liners and the uni pin ones you use both permanent where they won't smear with the paint? Yes, they are both permanent. And the way you check, just have a read of the side of the pen. It will, tell, it will say, uh, that one says waterproof slash fade proof here on the side. Fade proof just means like light fast. So if you leave that in the, you know, outside in the sun, it's not going to fade. And then, yeah, these ones as well, I think they say waterproof on them. So always just check, always check. And I'll, I'll show you one of my other sketchbooks. If you want to know what um, a pen looks like that sort of uh, isn't ink, that isn't waterproof looks like, and it's basically this pen here, uh, this little fountain pen that I got with some water-soluble ink, just pull out my other sketchbook and I'll show you um, a couple of sketches that I've done uh, with those and um, there's there's one just really really quickly and you can see um, you can see basically how it uh, spreads um, you still can see that initial line funny enough that it soaks through the page and you can see a faint part of where that line um, was put but you know at least you know 40 50 percent of it is lifted off the page and um, moves on another technique some people do is you know they just draw draw with the with a water soluble pen um and you know i love drawing with these uh fountain pens as well they're just they're just so smooth and have so much character and you can turn it on an angle i mean here for example get a really uh dark um thicker line and then you turn it angle it up like that and look at that you can get Thinner line, the more you kind of angle it. Um, so it's almost like having a couple of different, you know, a couple of different nibs. So, um, yeah. So what was I saying? Yeah, I always get distracted. Um, so yeah, when you're when you're drawing with this, you don't even need to add watercolors. You can draw with it and then pick up a brush with just some clean water and then um, color in. And, and you can actually create some high, some you know, dark areas and some light areas, leave some bits um, with a, a wash of that ink. So it sort of dissolves some of that ink and you can shift that around to create basic tones. Um, some really beautiful work um, that you can just sort of Google and look online as well. Here's another uh, one on the side here that I did. Um, so 
Yeah, that one went a bit overboard. I think it just ink just ran all over the place. Um, but a different sort of feel. I mean, if you look at that, look at these, and you compare them to say these, um, completely different. I wouldn't say one even looks better. Um, I, I want to experiment around with this technique a little bit more and see if I can get in more detail as well. Um, but I did also use in here paints which were slightly opaque. So if you have a look, it has a more pastel-y sort of color, more chalk in there compared to this stuff here, which is very transparent, very vibrant. So um, yeah, just in case you, you're wondering what it looks like, different pens. Always try to experiment um, and change things around. Um, try different pens. And you, you, you'll be more likely that way to find something that works for you, a style that works for you. Um, you know, I'm, I always tell everyone to use waterproof pens, but you know what? That's that's not a set rule. That's just what I that's just what I do. And at some point, um, you got to decide uh, what works and what 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 you want to sort of represent. Um. Great, so I hope that answered your question, Tanya. I sort of went on a bit of a tangent. I always I tend to do that. Uh, comment from Yvonne, Yvonne Ulmer. Thanks for pointing out the difference. I just bought uh, pigment liners but haven't used them. Great. And the thing with pigment liners as well is that they often come in so many different nib sizes. Like this one, this one's a 0 0.05. It's, it's tiny. It's almost like a needle. And then you've got all these other ones, 0.1 to 0.8. So you definitely can have a larger variation of marks um, getting pigment liners. But um, yeah, the 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 way that the ink dispenses is a lot more conservative than um, some of these these uh, liquid ink pens, which have um, ink just comes out really quickly, and you can't sort of leave it hanging on a part of the page for too long, otherwise it starts soaking in. Um, paint with Merthal, so true, uh, that's true. I'm shy painting in public places, but I will be persistent. I guess, yes, especially during uh, this lockdown, I'm Melbourne, um, yeah, okay, you're in Melbourne, great. Lots of suburban parks around, and I like my walks. I'll start small. Yeah, uh, I think that's the best way, kind of incorporating it um, with stuff that you already do. So if you're going to, I don't know, if you're on the way um, maybe to pick something up from the shops or, or you do a bit of your exercise and you pass through a park, you can stop for even 15 minutes to do a really quick, really quick sketch behind a, a tree or something like that. And I guarantee you people are just not going to, um, they're not going to bother, <laughs> bother you. Um, it's only if you're out, I think, if you go onto a busy street like in the city or something like that and you set up your easel and you start painting i think that's definitely gonna draw more more attention but um you see people sitting out in public reading books out in the park and doing things out there and um you know no one no one really goes up to them but it, the benefits of it they it helps you improve so much um and and uh yeah just being out there and uh, in the moment as well, there's no distractions. There's just what you see, your pen and, and your paper. You can always bring one of these. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen these, but these water brushes. I'll pull one out in case you haven't seen one of these before. This is a water brush. Um, and it's basically a, a brush that um, has an inbuilt reservoir here. You just fill it with some water and um, you can bring a little palette around. And just dip that in and um, color, color using it, and you'll be surprised how far this water really goes for. I mean, you can do a whole, maybe a couple of paintings with just one of these these reservoirs. I mean, it's um, pretty, but pretty basic. You're not going to be able to get in the, um, I, I guess the, the the you know these fading sort of areas and what have you. But you know, I think it's pretty good for for something done in public. But you know, I think at least with the pen sketch, it's pretty, you know, it's a lot more straightforward to do that. Um, so that's, that's it. Basically, that's a finished, finished sketchbook. And, you know, uh, I did mention also in the title that I talk a bit about um, my DIY, my sort of, um, my, my uh, sketchbook that I made. 
and um, I did I did get a bit of help from this about the stitching. It did, did get a little bit of help from the stitching, but this here is um, made from an entire uh, sheet of watercolor paper. So if you go to you know if you're you know if, um, you guys are mostly in Melbourne at the moment or you're in Sydney, Australia, watching um, a large sheet of watercolor paper. Um, you know, cotton watercolor paper, it costs about eight bucks if you go to your local art supply store. It's, you know, 76 centimeters by 56 centimeters. And you can tear it down or you can cut it down um, into a into this sort of, um, you can basically, I just, you know, can look up a tutorial online on how to do it. Um, you, know, I, you know, I'm really not, I have no skills in sewing or no skills in embroidery or anything like that, but it's something that I could understand, um, you know, with a bit of, you know, with a bit of repetition. <laughs> so this cost me really about, yeah, um, about eight bucks to make a 14, 16 page sketchbook. Um, I did sticky uh, the glue the first and the last page onto a bit of cardboard. So I've lost... A couple of pages um, but basically uh, it's a really economical sort of way to to make yourself a, a little sketchbook so these are just a couple couple that I did last night some small some small sketches and I'm going to use this again um, today to do a couple of other sketches for those of you still watching um, and just reading the comments again, and just see who's out there. Sorry, there's a few. Um, there's a few more comments I haven't um, caught up exactly, but I just keep sending them through if you've got questions. Do you ever use so Peter Edwards? Um, do you ever use watercolor pencils to sketch with? No, I don't use watercolor pencils, but th there are a few artists out there. I can't remember her name. She's an Israeli artist. Um, yeah, I've got a name. Oh, I don't know. Irina. Uh, Irina Spectre. So you can kind of look her up. Um, and she uses watercolor pencils, kind of like water-soluble pencils. Um, that way, when you go over it with uh, a bit of ink um, or a bit of watercolor later, that you will actually get, um, it will soak through and um, dissipate. So the, the pencil marks are less likely to show through. Uh, but I don't, I don't use, I don't have uh, any of those pencils myself. But it's probably a good idea to, yeah, to give it a try sometime. Sandra Hancock, I love the water soluble ink pictures. Looks like it could be hard to control though. Yeah, um, they definitely, they definitely do feel um, hard to control because uh, the the lines they just move around as soon as you drop in some water. Um, but the interesting thing though. Is that most of those lines still remain? So I'll bring that up quickly again. Yeah, the, the most of the lines still remain. It's hard to see on the camera. I don't know. It's kind of a fixed focus kind of thing at the moment. But um, a lot of the lines still have a kind of faint edge to them. So um, the camera's just not really picking it up. So even though it has dissolved most of those lines, um, I guess a part of it still is in the paper, but um, this paper I'm using, it's definitely very absorbent. So I'll have to try it on some paper that's a bit more, um, yeah, less absorbent, I suppose. Um, this paper here is really kind of thin and it's uh, very smooth. Let's bring up a couple of sketches that I did last time. And, and you can see what happens when you're using watercolor paper that's really uh, smooth. You, you get pieces and areas which just dry with kind of blooms. Um, it doesn't sort of mix properly. So you just get um, sharp areas here because the water pools in areas. Uh, see, when, you, when you're drawing or when you're painting, um, you know, the paper buckles a little bit. And because the paper buckles, what happens is that it then the, the water will then, um, yeah, just kind of gravitate towards areas where there are dips just through gravity. And so um, that's how you end up with some of these funny bits. But it does have its own kind of charm. So, yeah, I, I still like these in its own way, but you can't sort of, um, 
you, you, yeah, you can't really control it as much, I suppose. Uh, let's look at the the chats. Um, yeah, so I hope I hope that answered your question, Sandra. Uh, Sandra Messner. I've used I've used these a couple of times. Nice to work with. Um, I think you're talking about. I think Sandra's talking about water soluble ink. Yep. So it's yeah, definitely a, a good thing to try out if you if you have um I don't know if you if you've got a fountain pen somewhere at home. A lot of the time, the inks that they use in there are water soluble, so you can try that. And uh, welcome, Bronwyn. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us. Small crowd this time, but I'm really happy that you guys are, are here. Um, didn't really expect anyone to be watching at this um, this time. And. Tanya, Tanya's asking, what type of paper did you use in that book? So um, the paper that I use these days, I've swapped over. So I used to use Saunders Waterford, which is by um, St. Um, Cuthbert's Mill, I think. So I used to use Saunders Waterford, and then I swapped over now to this brand called Baohong. So it's it's spelt B-A-O-H-O-N-G. So they're a paper company in kind of direct competition with Archers and all the, the major manufacturers. And um, I saw some of my, you know, some of the painters that I like, um, Alvaro, uh, Asigne, Joseph Zorukovic using it, and I thought I'd give it a try. And, um, yeah, it's it's actually quite a quite an interesting and um, effective paper to, to use. The surface has um, – it's an interesting surface. It kind of looks lumpy in, in areas. Um, kind of like like sandy or, or almost, um, but uh, it takes a little while to, to get used to. But yeah, it's it's really nice paper. So it doesn't really matter all that much what you what you use, as long as um, I guess with this sketchbook, it just shows. I mean, you don't really need that much to to put something like this together. It's, I mean, this only cost me about eight dollars to get that sheet of paper tear it down into these um, segments like this. It's almost A4 size because they come in um, funny sizes. Um, so yeah, 76 by 56. So it's slightly smaller than A4, but it's essentially the same thing because this cardboard backing here is, is A4. That You know, if you can see just the edge of it there. So it's really almost the same size as that. You can't beat that, especially if you're starting out. Because a lot of times beginners end up buying, um, you know, sketchbooks for, for you know 10 15 bucks and um the quality quality is pretty pretty average and especially if you're trying to get in some of these little techniques watercolor techniques and learn it can really frustrate you when you start out and things just don't work out you kind of think that it's your fault and you you know i've done everything that the tutorial says but it just doesn't work and a lot of the time it comes down to just those basic materials okay um Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to get into the, the drawing of one of these scenes now. Let me just put it on. Okay. Hope you can all see that there in the corner. Um, if you're wondering where it is as well, I've uploaded it to the discussion section so you can pick it out and have a look. Um, I have not tried to draw this before. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the important things to do is always to try a different scene. Um, it's, the temptation is there to stick with something that you've always done. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to get, get a, a basic sketch down. Uh, you know, I might do it again later. Um, but I'm going to have it up here on the screen. Just going to bring my reference picture up. Um, Glenda. Glenda, enjoying this, Darren. Love your lessons. You've taught me so much. Um, thanks, Glenda. And... Um, I'm happy that that you've learned a few things and it's been helpful for you. It's uh, I'm always happy to just share what I what I know and um, yeah, it's also it's also good motivation for me to to sort of come up with new things to share with you guys, um, you know, materials or, or what have you, different techniques and things like that. Um, so. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm not sure if you guys are probably maybe in the middle of dinner or something like that. You can always watch later. Um, but I'm going to give this one a, a crack. And I'm going to also keep an eye on the chats too in the, in the corner. 
Um, so feel free to interrupt me, but I'm going to work on it for, for a little bit and then check the chats, um, see how we're going. So what I want to do first, I'm going to start out here on the left side of the screen. Um, hang on a moment. Oops. Um, move this it's visible. And um, I'm going to just put the general position of this, the dome um, just about here. And if anyone's, if anyone's been to Florence, let me know. I was there for, I was there for a few days. So I went, I went on a tour and um, um, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll never do again is one of those, um, one of those super quick tours where you go through, you know, like 10 cities or something in um, a few days. I did one of those around Italy and it was too much. But I do reckon, you know, I do remember going through Florence. Um, it was just, it was just very quick, certainly very quick. Okay. Um, so I'm just putting in, yeah, just, what am I doing? Just the dome, um, rough location of it sort of here, there, that side. You've also got this tower up in the background here, like that. Interesting looking tower. You know, we've got a bit of that background there. Um, and where the dome finishes, it's almost around halfway, the halfway point of the paper. Okay. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's something in construction here. There's a couple of these domes um, out kind of coming up like that. I'm just going to mark out generally where they are. Um, but other than that, I think I'm going to get started and try, um, try to figure it out as I, as I go. Okay. So I've got a 0.5. 0.5 liner, and um, the paper that I'm using is uh, cold press watercolor paper. I'm just going to move the camera a little bit. It's not centered exactly. Let's go up here. I'm going to get in this dome coming up like this. Um, there, it's kind of almost like an egg. Looks like an egg. Fabergé egg. Okay, up the top like that, and it comes down. I'm just gonna keep it symmetrical. Gotta pay a bit more attention to these domes, especially this large one that comes up because it's gonna, uh, yeah, it's just gonna look very obvious. Just come down like that. And you know what? I've realized I probably want to switch to a to this here, which is a smaller, sorry, larger nib. 0.7 nib. Um, I prefer actually drawing in it. It's just uh, got a th gives a thicker line. Okay, and just draw on the top of that dome like that. Okay, and there's a few bits and pieces running down. It doesn't need to be uh, much in there. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's get in this side part there. There, um, it's kind of got a section like that. Underneath another section like that. Yeah, there's so much in there. Um, there's a sort of a little window here um, with an outer edge like that. There. I'm going to color that middle part in a bit as well. There's a, another window or something there on that side. Again, just replicate um, that one there. Another one here like this, very lightly. Going over, I think this photograph is taken where they were doing some renovation or some restoration works as well. So there's bits and pieces on here that are um, that just look like they're in repair or what have you. So there we go. That's that bottom part like that. Then we're going to get in this side here like that. Yeah. And um, I've never really done a scene like this where you've got so many uh, rooftops and shapes um, underneath. So we're going to really challenge ourselves here to look at these shapes um, more as, you know, look, that's a triangle and that's a rectangle underneath, something like that. Um, you know, that's all that you need to look at these shapes as. 
over here, I don't know what this is. I think this is, again, maybe another another uh, mini tower or something on that side. I'm just going to imagine it. Imagine having something in there. Um, and then we've got a bit here underneath. Uh, is what going on in here, isn't there? And this kind of comes down behind like this. And it disappears. There's even a section under underneath like this. Kind of a dome. And what it is, another kind of dome shape attachment there. A couple of windows or something like that. Um, there. And uh, here in the background, this is where we've got really a lot of stuff. We've just, we just look at them as rectangles. So like rooftops um houses and things just overlapping with each other it's just really small you can barely see what's kind of happening happening uh, back there and also hatch in a bit of darkness on that one um let's have a look what we do so yeah this what's happening is that the light source is coming in from the left light coming in from the left and it's casting a bit of shadow on the right hand side of these um, buildings so i'm going to just hatch hatch a little bit here on this side to show some uh, a little darkness on that right hand side there's also these little i don't know what they are but um if anyone knows what they are I'd love to know i think they're like drainage maybe they're like drainage holes or something like that three little dots over here, three, here we go. Um, just a little bit of, a little bit of that, and we're gonna go across. Um, I'm gonna go across over here. Draw a line straight across there. The big shapes are important. Um, now there's a question from Sandra. Um. Hi again, I've just checked a supplier for Baohong paper in the UK, I have found a choice of student or professional, quite a price difference, both cotton. Which do you use? Um, should I go for the professional, do you think? Um, I think just check the specifications of it, make sure that they're, they're both 100% um, um, cotton. There's got to be a difference. I mean, if they're both, you know, it's from the same supplier and they're both um, you know, widely different prices. There's got to be some difference. Maybe call them up and and find um, find out. But look, don't, you know, like uh, the paper that I use again, Sandra, uh, I use all different kinds of paper. You know, in the UK, probably you know, look for what's um, available for you guys. What might be available? Um, you know, that's that's um, you know. Uh, it, you know, more locally, things like the uh, Saunders Waterford paper. They've got Milford paper as well. Great paper. I've I've used that for many years as well. Um, some of the Fabriano stuff. Maybe Archers might be cheaper for you over there. So yeah, have a have a look. Um, but in terms of those two Baohong papers, you probably want to call them up and see what exactly is the difference. Um, yeah, yeah. It could you know it could be maybe like a label. It could be a labeling thing a branding thing maybe they're, they're the same or very similar papers um but i think always uh, get you know get the 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 you know get some good paper if you can it makes a huge difference uh i know so we're continuing on here now this top bit actually starts here halfway through that there we go our Cutting across like this, ending up somewhere here. Um, where are we going to finish off the tower? Well, we're going to look at this. Finishes off somewhere around here. Look at the height of that dome. Around about there. Small little triangle here on top. That, and I'm going to carry this down. Page like this. Here. Um... Fantastic, and I think I'm also getting an edge, it's kind of like a bit of a three-dimensional feel to it. Where's that sort of edge? 
there as well kind of comes down it splits up into two segments so there's almost a line here and then we've got um what is this some kind of window complicated window structure has a few bits and pieces in there that and then we've got um the surrounding areas of the window there's a couple of window bits here oops this should be a little bit higher and then a couple lower down like that and we go just going to go in let's put in a couple of little circles there also for the other sections that okay here we go a line on the top like that with a bit more structure okay um starts looking like that that's okay now um yeah and then really i'm just looking at objects here in the distance and just trying to put in some smaller shapes and you can use a smaller pen as, as well so something like this um you know you want to be quick i don't want to sit here for all too long drawing this i just want to get an impression of what i think is there um the temptation is always you know when you've got a reference picture in front of you there's not really a time constraint so you can sit here and, and get um all down in all these bits and pieces until the cows come home which is why i kind of like if i can doing these in person so then I, I have that sense of urgency otherwise you tend to just drag it out too long so there we go just some bits and pieces um so just uh, gonna draw a line now coming through here that okay and uh now there's a bottom part of this but what we're going to do i'm going to start getting in some of these rooftops of the houses as well something like that uh, there's a rooftop of one there um actually over here there's some kind of building there um you know lots of overlapping shapes and this one kind of comes and juts in front of this one comes all the way down like that you know we're gonna have to pick objects and shapes in here that um you know and leave some of the other ones out there's no way we're going to be able to get all of this in um yeah no way there's a bit of that um you know here underneath there's a there's like there's a rooftop something there and a couple of windows probably square sort of shapes there like that um the thing with drawing on rough paper is that um certainly you get a bit more control with the watercolors but i find um i find that you do get um there's a bit more resistance on the paper when you're drawing with the pen so um couple of rooftops here look they just overlap um, and come down like this overlapping rooftops there's just another sort of square bit here um, I'm just really picking out some areas that I can drop in okay and help sort of use these to overlap with these with the um, building in the background pretty sure pretty sure this must be like a cathedral or something <laughs> I obviously didn't read my history lessons or remember what happened when I was over there, but uh, let's continue on. I'm going to actually start drawing some larger shapes to get uh, just get into this front area because I'm you know starting to avoid it and I shouldn't do that. Here we go. One so this area of that building which just reaches out. Um, it's a lot higher, um, and then you. It kind of balances on top of this other section here and uh, we've got uh, this section like this there look at that i'm just looking at shapes i'm not even i'm not even looking at what this is i know it's a rooftop i know it's a rooftop but it's just squares it's just squares and this here is a uh 
This could be a balcony here, um, like that. It's a balcony, like that, and uh, here you go. Balcony, and we could even put someone standing here, you know? Um, you know, drawing that up, we've got a section of a roof here. Um, it's great practice to do this sort of thing. And recognizing shapes. Okay. Um, I think this is another part of a roof. You know, there yeah, I'm just taking out some bits and pieces that I like, keeping them in there, and letting the rest of it um, blend in. So it's this here. I draw here. Remember what I draw in there. I think that's a rooftop. So I can just start again drawing in another another rooftop or something which overlaps here with another bit. Um, it's just all shapes. Just looking at shapes and um, how we can simplify them down. Um, right, and Beth. Um, Beth Planky, 5.20 a.m. here. Winston. No, you don't talk too much. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. Um, I'm sure some would disagree with you, Beth, but I'm, I'm glad that you can um, that 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 um, you can put up with me talking for. Uh, I don't know if you've been to some of the other tutorials or the workshops, but I do talk for a while. Then you know, believe it or not, I'm a pretty quiet person in my daily life. Um, I'm called an introvert more than once. So, you know, it, I think um, I think I feel a lot more comfortable talking on camera than I used to. Certainly, something that you just um, yeah you just have to practice a lot. And sometimes I like to check with you guys to see if it's uh, working for you or not. So whether yeah, like whether I'm talking too much or whether you'd like me to discuss. Um, or explain a little bit more what I'm doing, that kind of thing. Um, it can be hard for me to figure out at times, but it's um, you guys have been really great at just letting me know what works for you, so that I can, um, you know, give you give you the right amount of tips and um, that kind of thing. Hmm, what are we doing here? So we've got this. Just getting in a bit of line work for the roof, rooftops and things here. Something in, see, there's not really much in here. So I'm going to add in some more houses overlapping um, in this section like that. That can be a rooftop. I'm just making this up. And uh, that kind of comes down. Maybe get in a couple of windows or something peeking out um, behind that one there. Uh, what have we got? I don't know. We've just we've just got um, a lot of mess in here. I shouldn't call it mess, but it's just you're just looking at it as really white space, and there's patterns and things on the buildings. There's so much. There's so much going on in here. Um, there's really so much going on in here. So, and, and one thing I really recommend: try not to look and compare your yours to the to the reference picture too much because um there's no way there's no way you're going to be able to draw this in exactly um especially with the quick sort of sketch that we're doing um here at the moment um lindsay lindsay banger you're sketching is uh, hatching sketching your hatching is um so neat finds all over the place y yeah it's uh I try to draw, I try to hatch in one sort of direction. Um, yeah, it's, it can be tricky. It can be tricky at times, but um, keep going. Keep trying. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. That's going to do okay. And even cross hatch, this is just another you know, going in an opposite direction. Um, I'm not going to do it all that much here. I'm hoping to get in some of this darkness 
um, as much as I can through the watercolors later. Overlapping shapes are so important. I, you know, can't emphasize that enough. Um, where you can make sure you've got houses and things that just overlap um, with other houses, other shapes. Remember that it's, uh, you know, you can zoom in on that section of that. Um, oh, it's going to change the reference photo, but you can zoom in on that section uh, and that will give you also a better indication because otherwise you do what I'm doing here and I'm trying to just scribble something in, but it still needs to have a kind of structure in there. So that's a rooftop for that. And then there's another one coming up here like this. Um, just it's just amazing. Um, the density of all these houses uh, through this section, you don't get stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't think in Australia you really get um, such kind of density in buildings and such um, this this amount of built up areas because we're still a relatively new country. So um, when I see stuff like this, it's just I just think, geez, it's uh, a lot of people living in one area, that's for sure. Mm, I think this is a balcony here as well. There, that could be some kind of balcony. And then again, another house, the rooftop here, there. I haven't drawn in a border as well. Not really bothering with that. Now here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get an overlapping shape. This is a larger building coming in here. Um, again, I'm loosely basing all this stuff on the references. Yeah, so pick out, um, just pick out some rooftops and try to get them in like like this. Okay, overlapping with each other. Um, you know, this one maybe overlaps with the uh, this building here in front. In fact, it does, and there's a kind of, um, it casts a shadow. Um, yeah, it casts a shadow. So I'm just going to draw in a bit of that, the bottom part of that building. There'll be a bit of a shadow cast here. Of course, in this area, there's going to be more stuff. Another rooftop, rectangles. Um, I don't know what that shape is called. When you got the rectangle in the sides, it kind of um, didn't pay attention during my geometry classes. I think it's something like a parallelogram or something. It's kind of like a rectangle, but these sides are kind of yeah, going on a on an angle. Okay. Uh, that looks um looks all right there. Uh, we probably can do with getting in some windows here at the bottom. And. You know, because we've got areas where there are uh, obviously in the front, it's a bit closer. We can we can add more details to indicate um, the closeness of things. As things get closer, they get more detailed. So I'm going to just uh, add in a few couple of windows. Took a little while to do. Um, Bit of hatching on the rooftops and uh, all going in one direction like this. Notice how that pen skips over the paper a little bit as well here. Um, that's that's what you get with paper that's slightly rough. Here we go, another house or something like that here. A bit of a chimney top at the bottom. What's all this stuff? It's uh, another rooftop there just goes on forever goes on forever zoom out let me zoom out of the paper um let me look let me look at the uh comments yvonne um i like the discussions as a new painter it's very helpful great um i you know i try to just share what i'm thinking half the time when i'm drawing uh, just in case you know, because I often things that I do because I've done them so many times, um, they're automatic, right? So 
but I can't assume that you guys don't know that. So that's why I try to just, you know, speak um, out aloud, essentially what I'm thinking, what's going through my head when I'm doing something. That way, you can always go back and um, make sense of it. So, thanks Yvonne. Uh, Tanya, different density. Different density. I, il, il, duomo. Il duomo, that is the feature that was built in the 1400s. Oh, cool. What, what do you mean? The, um, are you talking about these little things or, or like the, or do you mean part of the actual, the houses? Um, painting with Myrtle says, looking great. Just seeing the photo, I am overwhelmed. Um, what is your advice on drawing for a beginner? Thank you. So with the, with the drawing, um, it takes a lot of time to train your, train your mind um, to, to look at things as shapes rather than houses. So what I mean by that is when I'm referencing a lot of objects that I'm drawing, I'm talking about that's a rectangle, you know, that's a square, that's a triangle. You know, that's a box on its side. Um, I think, like, simplifying down the shapes, um, well, not the shapes, simply simplifying down everything into basic shapes makes it um, doable in your mind. Because I know what you mean. I When I look at this scene as well, I, I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty natural to just look at it and think, how am I... How on earth am I going to draw this in? Um, but start with the big things first. Start with the easiest thing. And for me, the easiest thing here is this dome. Looks kind of like an egg. If you can draw an egg, you can draw a dome. Draw in that dome, kind of like an egg, like a half egg. Um, and then you sort of separate that out because you know there's a couple of lines coming down the dome here. Um, so separating it out. So draw those in, and before long, um, before you know, I mean, you get in something that looks kind of like, um, kind of like what's in the, the reference. It's not going to be exact. Um, big shapes, get those in, and then use that to reference in the other ones. And all these houses and things, they're just rectangles. I'm just looking at them as kind of rectangles on going up, disappearing off into the distance. You know, there's actually a, a gigantic shadow cast here on the right. It's not going to matter what we even put in here. Look, I'm just, if I just scribble this, a few bits of scribble or something in here as well, you know, no one's going to be able to tell. Just some little bits and pieces floating around there. Just the stuff in the foreground that you've got to, uh, a bit more, you think a bit more um, what you're doing, about what you're doing. Here, there, there's another, is this some kind of building? It's just a square. Look, I'm just drawing a square. Then I've put in a window here. That's a square. It's a building overlapping here as well. And even this building kind of comes down and disappears. It's just, it's overwhelming. It is, but look at it as just squares overlapping with other squares, overlapping with um, a rectangle here. Okay. Then we'll darken this rectangle. And then here, we got just following the lines. If you look at the rooftops, the tiles kind of go in a certain direction. Um, and these kind of go out flat, go, come down like that. Um, now I'm in trouble because I'm not sure how these ones kind of go. I think probably like this. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's really just going to be quite dark under here. We can put in a window like that. You know, just a window, and there's a couple of like a couple of bars or something. Looks like a prison cell. Um, here we go. That's a that's a window, probably a bit too dark, but it doesn't matter. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's that's the um our friend on the balcony having a good time there. Front row, front row tickets. Um. Front row tickets, bit of hatching behind there as well. 
Lighting game. Uh, some darkness behind this. Um, Yvonne, Yvonne Ulmer. I think what you were referencing earlier was a trapezoid. Yeah, that's you got it. Trapezoid. Um, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've had to um, pull out the the, the maths um, books. Uh, I hope I can leave them leave them in the cupboard. Um, do work with spreadsheets every now and then. Um, in case some of you don't know, do this as more of a, a hobby, and uh, hopefully in the future. Um, and if I keep doing it, hopefully it can be more of a more of a um, ongoing full time sort of sort of thing. But during the day times, um, yeah, I've got a got an office job and um, I'm looking at numbers a lot. So people are often surprised when I tell them I am an artist. And um, here is. Uh, these larger buildings here on the, the left. So I think what I'll do is actually start with um, this one here, this big sort of section that comes out like this here. Uh, it's hard for me to I'm looking at it, and obviously it's hard for you to tell what I'm talking about, but it's this building right to the bottom left-hand corner of the scene. Um, bottom left-hand corner, that large kind of house there, the rooftop extends down. Um, you know, this bit here just comes down like this, uh, oops, it's not exact, I haven't got it how it is in the reference, but it will do. And we've got a section of it coming out like that, there, there we go. And we've got a section here coming out like that. This is another kind of, I think this is someone else's balcony, because there's a door here going up. To this rooftop here. That's what it is. It's a rooftop. And get in that top section. It's just a box. It's just a, just a box there. It's always um, sitting on top of this balcony area rooftop. A lot of shapes which are almost unidentifiable. Uh, that's a box or chimney or something like that there. That should actually come down further. That's okay. So we can move that down about here, there, um, and the bottom of this roof here too. Yeah, point it up like that, and we got a section here, bottom of this house, um, and of course some um, windows uh, as well. They just disappear out. You can't see them. You can barely. Uh, you can barely see them. Um, uh, oh, yeah, it is it is the cathedral, Tanya. Yeah. And when you're here in person, when you're actually walking through the streets um, and you look at that cathedral, like at the end of the street, it just looks enormous. I, I remember um, when you're looking at it from a distance uh, or from sort of an aerial photograph like this, you, you can't tell how big it is. But um, when you're there on the ground, it's... Um, yeah, it's it's huge. I, I never actually ended up going in there. I think it was um, that there was some renovations or restorations going on at that time. There, so um, let's have a look now. Hatching. We're gonna follow these roof tiles. This, yeah, they're all kind of going in that direction, and they sort of lay out a bit more over on this side. There. Yeah, the they kind of just go completely straight. This, there we go, and that's something. That is something that we've got in a little house here. Um, you know, paying a bit more attention to the things in the foreground because I know that um, they get noticed a lot more than say, um, yeah, than than say basically some of the other bits and pieces that you put in in the background. Um, I, I know it's not technically in the, the same spot um, that it is in the reference, but uh, we'll make do. It's a window. Here I've made a mistake. 
it's it's kind of um we kind of uh, got a whole area here where there's not enough. Uh, it's kind of looking at this, the street. So I'm going to have to just make up some buildings. And again, uh, kind of a rooftop here. Um, let's have a look and maybe get this to join on like this. There, a uh, couple of windows here. I find this really relaxing. Um, and another technique that you can sort of play around with as well is you, you kind of just draw these lines, try to not try not to take your pen off the paper as well. And that allows you that ends um, allows you to end up with something quite interesting looking to it. So it's a different style. So I can try it over here. All the things about these sketches, you, you don't we know we're not trying to get in a masterpiece. We're, we're using this also to practice our techniques and um, try different things. And I haven't taken the pen off the paper. Just trying something, the triangle, and there we go, another bit here. So if you see this little part that I'm doing, where I haven't lifted the paper, uh, haven't lifted the pen, I'll, I'll take it off a bit so you can have a look in just a moment. Um, okay, but look at that. Slightly different erratic sort of look in there um, and you might like that and look at that and think hey that's something that i want to do or something that i want to try out um what was i doing over here more rooftops coming in there we go that's another roof or something like that and down this there part of a building i think that's uh, there Yeah. Um, the rooftop there. Coming over there. Like that. Another overlapping bit like that here. You know, lots of stuff going on. A bit too much stuff. of hatching and with hatching get in a bit of darkness in here and also maybe some at the bottom here as well that what else do we have really the rest of it we're just we're almost done in terms of the drawing i'm just putting in shapes that just another the trapezoid thanks yvonne and uh, you know, another section here that comes down there. Look at that, it just does not have to be perfect at all. Okay, you just want to have a few of these geometric shapes running through. Another one there, another one. We can even do them very loosely over on this side. This, but the most important thing is just the, the roofs, the, the roofs of these buildings. Um, especially in the foreground, uh, are just a commonly associated um, feature of these Florence uh, Florence scenes. It's the, the kind of um, warm color on the rooftops. So really important to get in some of those. I don't know what this is. It looks like a, it, it's really interesting. It looks like a triangular shape, you know, like a dome. And there's another bit there. I don't know what that is. You know, there's all, so many shapes in here. There's squares, rectangles, all kinds of things. You know, you might get another triangular shape here coming down. You can zoom into the reference picture and try to draw it all in, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I'd say something like that. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much enough drawing. I think uh, the last thing that I will do is uh, maybe get in some of this hill uh, mountain off in the background like this cutting around the back of these um, domes and uh, exiting off here on the side like that and we will be ready to go um, 
you know, some more hatching like that. This is just going to bring out, uh, yeah, just the, the rooftops, the direction of the these tiles and things as well. I find that's it's a good way to add some dimensionality onto some of these buildings. You know, that's the roof. Looks like a roof. That could be a roof here as well, coming up there. Another roof continuing continuing on, another one there. Um, you know, that could be one there. So there we go. Something like that. Do the trick. And um want to add more later. Don't feel like you just have to get it all in now. You can wait. Wait till later on. Okay. Um, I'm going to put in some color. Put in a, a little bit of color through this entire area, guys. Um, and, and you'll be surprised just how little, uh, little time it takes to paint this all in. Okay. Um, how you how you doing? Now, I've noticed there's a few more people now on YouTube um, watching. Let me know how you're doing. There's Nikki Nikki Hammonds, uh, Naiki. So I hope I've I've said your name correctly, Naiki. Five thirty a.m. in Atlanta, and in uh, Facebook, I don't think there's any more anyone else um, in the chats. But if you're if you're there, um, let me know how you're going with your drawing. Um, yeah, be interested to hear how you're doing and, uh, whether you're, you know, whether some of this is making sense to you or not. I'm really trying to simplify this down. You know, there's even, I mean, look here, there's even tiny little rectangles. That's tiny little rectangles on the dome. And I'm not getting them in perfectly. I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to put in a few here, yeah? Just a few little rectangles. That, that. Some of them kind of overlap with that center section like that. There we go. Here in there. Um, they're, they're, they're just so light, especially here on that right-hand side. You don't need to do very much. Really just bonus stuff you might want to add in. Um. The domes, uh, this area of the domes where there are windows as well, you can just, you know, again, start to draw out some extra details. Okay, because remember, we, we only put in a little bit of detail before. And I've got a smaller pen here. This is a 0 0.38, 0 0.38 pen. So it doesn't take all that much. Um, uh, it doesn't look too obvious when you put in some lines and i think oh you know what's going on it's i think they've taken off this part of the the cathedral to restore it or something like that so it's missing two parts i'm just gonna draw them in i'm just gonna draw in some lines some vertical lines coming down like this okay okay something like that um I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. I'm going to stop with this and I'm going to go ahead and um, get in a bit of the, the watercolor now before I, before I muck up the, um, I muck up the drawing. Okay. I want it to look like something by the end of this. Uh, raising this up on a slightly elevated area here, just put a, box of those pens behind and going to pick out some colors so you see a bit of my palette here on that left hand side I'll tell you what I'm using anyway let me clear the table a bit just too much table. The brushes here okay now, one of the first things I want to do is, is get in all this warmth, the warm colors um, uh, 
uh, through this scene where we can because um we get in that warmth uh then we don't need to worry about anything turning into some kind of greenish color later which is um it's an issue when we have when we're, when we're using warm colors and we're using a bit of blue for the sky so um i've got a number 10 round brush okay and this is how quick we are going to work so orange straight in there like that that orange here here um we can leave a bit of the white as well on these little sections like that um you know there Here's some orange okay the top of that dome i'm going to just leave okay then it kind of goes into this yellow ochre underneath here and the rest of it is kind of this it's pretty much white um though you can put in a little bit of titanium white or something in there okay same goes for this building this tower here i'm going to put in a light wash just a bit of this titanium white in there just a kind of off-white color um and this rooftop is orange in that section so i'm gonna drop in a bit of that orange and then as it moves down i'm just going to add in some more of that titanium white a little bit of that titanium white through the orange here orange here for this rooftop as well um and i'm going to go in and just keep on doing this same thing so that we've got a rooftop there we've got a rooftop um kind of there so just putting those in like that and then through the these sort of middle sections we can put in a bit of titanium white or we just leave it just leave it white you don't even need to you know you, you don't even need to put in anything else um there you can just leave it so the roofs we're just getting in that orange and you can change it up a little bit i've got burnt sienna burnt sienna and drop that in on some of the rooftops and that has more of a browner color that you can also mix in with the orange to dull it down a little bit so like that like that here where's that other rooftop there where the balcony is something there there um large one here down the bottom like this there okay here in the distance you know like that just all these little marks i'm using this number 10 round brush as well um because I don't want to be tempted to start um, trying to identify everything too much and put in too much detail. Um, I just want to put in a, a light wash over this whole um, thing. Then later we can try to you know play around with the shadows a bit. There we go. Orange, orange, lots of orange in the rooftops. Anywhere that you see a roof, pick up that orange and drop it in. This is um, viral orange, by the way, but you can make your own. Use any orange, just a bright orange. Look at that. Starting to come together, starting to look like something. More. Oh, just want some more strength up there. More up there. When it dries, that's going to be sort of a stronger area of contrast. Oops, picked up red by accident, but that's okay. Some more in there. Um, now the buildings have a kind of dulled down yellow color. It's almost like yellow ochre. So that's what I'm picking up, just some yellow ochre. Dropping that in here, there, a bit of yellow ochre. Now I'm not getting the whole lot in um i mean i'm not coloring every house in with the yellow ochre just looking at some of them we're going to leave some white as well okay just a warmer uh very dulled down yellow ochre okay some of these sections of the house and i'm hoping that it's going to just mix also with the red a little bit of that red um to you know there's some that are just white just leave them just leave some of them white part of the 
the appeal of this all is that there, there are just areas of the painting which are left essentially untouched. White of the paper is showing through. Fresh, fresh sort of feel to everything. I'm looking at the reference picture every now and then, but to be honest, not a whole lot at this stage. I'll start looking at the reference more when we've got the shadows to come in. That will be lots of fun to do. Love putting in shadows. A bit more titanium white on this. Oh, it just looks too looks too bright. Because it's not really that white. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of a creamy sort of colour like that. And in the background we can put in a bit of titanium white that too um and of course we have got all these trees and things out in the background so some of this green that green mix up to something that looks good to me good all right and i'm gonna cut around what do you think be very careful here just cutting around this is emerald green. Just use whatever sort of dark green you've got. Okay, here we go. Do that mountain there, and uh, where it sort of hits the the um, cathedral, you just want to make sure that you're leaving a sharp edge. You don't want to go into the cathedral too much. Like you don't want to go into the cathedral at all with that. So you want to do it pretty quickly though, like this. Like in fact, that's that's what we're looking for. I'm fiddling around too much over on this side. Here's another one. On a quick brush stroke like that. There we have it. Um, I want to join this up also with the houses a bit so that it's not all too it just sort of just starts all of a sudden. So to do that, I tend to just dry the brush and um, wet this area here and then we can cut around some of the rooftops like that. Um, this doesn't all just start. That one's going to have to stay like that, but this one here, we can soften the edges a bit as it comes and moves down in there. And then I'm just going to grab a bit of yellow ochre and drop that in here and hope it doesn't turn green. Okay, so sky, sky wash. Um, I'm going to be using just a flat brush here and some a uh, little bit of this cerulean blue, keeping it pretty light as well. Okay, like this, cutting around everything. That, 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 this area, there, down, here, here, and joining this on. Uh, to the mountains here in the background. They're kind of dried a little bit, but it's going to be softer. Look at that. Um, Join that on there. Uh, uh, around this top section of the cathedral. Look at that. Look at that. This is about the only time where you just got to be careful with the cutting around work that you're not um, touching areas you know, so that the colors can mix around. Okay. Um, hey, Philip, good to see you. Uh, 3.30 a.m. makes me wonder where you're located. Uh, must be near London, UK. Not sure if you're... You're probably talking to... At Nike or something, but um, I'm in I'm in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. So,
Alrighty, um, so uh, what I'm going to do is give this all a really quick dry um, and then I'm going to just pick up uh, some darker paint and finish this one off. You can look to lift off some paint to get in these cloud, sort of lighter cloud effects like this too. Dry the brush, lift off. Dry the brush, lift off. Yeah, dry the brush and lift off. And um, just a quick way to get in some softer looking um, areas of the sky, lighter looking areas of the sky, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna pause the audio for a little bit and I'll uh, dry it off. Okay, so I've got a number eight, number eight round brush here, and I've got all this neutral tint, uh, bit of mixed up neutral tint from before. I'm going to be using this, and also perhaps a um, bit of ultramarine blue in that neutral tint. So we've got a cooler color. We don't have many cool colors near the buildings. Okay, um, and we're going to do this all pretty much in one go. Hopefully. So underneath here, it's going to be dark. Okay. This under there. Mm, this. Thing around. There, like that. Just a bit of darkness. Um, this casts a shadow. That bit of the, what do you call it? Air of the rooftop. Okay. Swap brushes. That one was too, was too big. I was trying to do. Bit of coolness underneath there to indicate a shadow, a bit of a shadow or something here, yeah, maybe um, there, like that. So the light source is coming in from that left hand side. So essentially, what this means is that we just have to create a shadow for everything, um, everything so that it comes, um, yeah, so basically, there's a shadow cast underneath to the right some of these areas. So that's like actually part of the street, what have you below. Um, I'm going to get that in quickly. A few little strokes running through that section um, like this. There, this house here. Is that a house? I think that's a house here, but I forgot to put in some of that yellow and some warmer color for that section. Okay, a bit more blue in that mix, and blue and neutral tint, ultramarine blue plus neutral tint, that, um, look, uh, have, uh, Bit here, bit of darkness here, um, bit of this section. This this is some kind of shadow again being cast. Where is it? It's kind of on top of the. We're starting to miss out what's what is what. Um, there we go. So, in, in short, what you want to do is just you know on the right hand side of these buildings. Um, look at finding an area of shadow just underneath in, in some parts here and there, okay? Uh, let's have a look what we got here. Underneath the rooftops, 
another thing you got to keep in mind is underneath all these rooftops we're going to have some shadow this is proving a lot more trickier than i thought okay there's a shadow here um here anywhere where the light could sort of shine on uh, on top of there's going to be some darkness underneath like that let's have a look shadow underneath that that uh, roof there here and here underneath in here like that here there there and here Okay, as we move to the back as well, we just want to be careful that we're not going too um, sort of dark. Leaving some of that white in as well. Um, buy through your affiliate, uh, Philip, buy through your affiliate links. Uh, God, God bless you for such a great channel. <laughs> Thanks, Philip. Um, appreciate you, appreciate you sticking around and... Um, yeah, I put the links there. I put the links there because I thought it'd be a good, good bonus. They pay me like a little. I actually haven't received any anything from from Amazon because um, you need so many people buying from those links. Um, and usually, if you've got a gigantic audience, um, it all adds up. But I think I've had, I think I've made about maybe forty dollars or something like that. But um, yeah, appreciate it, Philip. And um, love that deep well palette of yours. Very nice. Yeah, this is um, part of the, the Schmincke palette that I got six or so years back when I started um, painting and I bought myself something you know, something nice. It was a lot cheaper than it is at the moment. It's certainly gone up, especially these days where, where um, you know, shipping and things like that is... Now becoming um, a bit trickier. Uh, here we go. There's some darkness running through in here. Yeah. A few little bits, pieces like that. Okay. And if I go through this later and I'll redo it at some stage. I'm going to have a, a good understanding of um, just how to do these shapes, how they relate to each other, how these shapes relate to each other. Um, I'm basically just picking out some spaces in the middle of these, um, in, the, in the middle of these buildings to uh, color in. That's a bit of shadow underneath that. And, and the cool thing here, this is going to be my favorite bit, there's a large shadow coming down here. And this joins on casting a shadow here. Comes up like this. This and then it comes up even more. All kind of here. There. It cast onto that onto the dome of the cathedral. Um here we go. That's a shadow. It's something. That and the shadow on the cathedral as well. Remember that the right side is going to be in darkness. The right side is going to be in darkness because um, the light source is coming from the left. Just darkening that down a little bit. The neutral tint. I've upset some of that. Um, orange in there, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Dry, okay. Sometimes things just look way too dark, like it does now. Um, but when it dries, we'll be okay. Looks like it's at this point in time, especially yeah. And this is actually a shadow cast by the dome. It comes right all across the ground here, like this, on top of these buildings. There we go. 
options here as well. What else do we have? And then the back here, bit of, bit of brushwork. There we go. A bit of brush. Mountains and things in the back probably need some, some work to, would have been better if I could just drop in some colors. Um, nice if I could just drop in some of those colors before while it was still wet. In fact, this part's kind of wet. I just want to get in, what I'm trying to do is just get in some texture, a bit of textures onto these mountains and things here in the background by dragging that brush across the surface, but I'm drawing the brush off or I do it to that. Okay. And then we can go in and grab like a bit of neutral tint, put in some birds flying around. I always like putting in these birds. Otherwise the sky just ends up looking too, um, too bare. And some of these white bits of the paper into well. There we are. Okay. I think we are pretty much done. I may go into this later and refresh it a little bit for a little sketch. I'm whoops, uh, I've done that. For a little sketch, I'm quite happy with it. Um and it's good practice for you guys as well, understanding how to put in little buildings and um, relating them to one another, which is so important. Recognizing shadows and creating sections of light and dark. So I'm going to pause this for a little bit, um, take a quick little break. If you're um, if you're enjoying the the video. Uh, the stream, uh, please uh, like the video, um, share it around with your friends as well. It just helps it get seen a, a little bit more. And um, I'll go through really quickly to see uh, what we've got, any chats. I did, and I did say that this would only take 15 minutes. It did take a lot longer than that. Um, let me look, the hatching is so neat. Uh, oh, that's just, I've read that, Lindsay, already. Um, Nerida, your colors are so vibrant. Who would have thought the shadows are more complicated than the drawing? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of tough figuring out uh, exactly where they fall, but um, I've kind of, you know, I've tried to simplify it down a lot. We know that, we, that there are shadows on the right-hand side of the buildings, the um, casting shadows to the right and then underneath the rooftops as well. A little bit of shadow there helps. Um, from a distance, the painting looks pretty pretty all right. Um, when you look in close, that's when you start to see not everything is perfect, but the, the main thing is like it has a holistic, um, holistically it, 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 it represents what it's supposed to in, in your mind. Uh, for me, I just wanted to get a, a simplified version of the of the reference. So um great uh lindsay i have to leave thanks i'm very happy with my attempt much appreciated we'll post later thanks thank you lindsay and yeah i really want to see what how um how you managed to tackle this one this was quite definitely quite challenging and this is the first time i've done this scene as well uh, but you you, you know that what I keep telling um, you guys in all the previous videos that I do is no matter what sort of scene you're doing, it could be any type of building that you're drawing. If you follow those simple um, ways of breaking down everything into smaller shapes, rectangles, circles, um, squares, and getting those big shapes in uh, where you need to, the rest of it, um, whatever you're drawing, you're able to, in your mind, um, just convert those things. Like, I don't know, if you're looking, even if I'm looking at, say, um, a mouse or something like that. I'm trying to draw a mouse. I'm looking at it as more of like almost like an egg-shaped, uh, oval-shaped um, thing, you know, rather than looking at it as like a like a, um, like a mouse or, or, or like an actual 
um, yeah, I guess an interpretable um, concept or or thing. So um, everything is just made out of smaller shapes. So um, if you have questions, um, or, or if you could just let me know how you're you're going, um, let me know. Let me know in the chats. Let me know in the chats. I, I'm going to grab a, a quick drink and I'll be back to do the other one. I'll do the other one pretty quickly, actually, because I need to get some, um, I need to get some dinner. It's, uh, it's pretty late. It's 9.20 here in, in Melbourne. But, um, when I'm having, um, when I'm having fun, I kind of forget to eat and do other things that are important. Um, Adam. But you're usually so quick. Oh yeah, I've, I, this is the first time I've I've attempted this one, so I'm trying to be more conscious, uh, like what I'm doing, especially some of the buildings, and also when I'm explaining things as well, answering questions, um, can take a little bit longer. But I'm I, I really like the the interaction and and some of the questions that come through. Um, I find taking my time as well is just a lot more, um. It's just just a lot more relaxing for me rather than trying to rush through the rush through the whole thing. Nike Hammonds, I've followed along for a couple of these videos. I'm new to urban sketching. My buildings still look wonky. How long before you're confident in your pen strokes? Um, it takes a while, Nike. It takes a while, and um, it's not something that you know. I can't say you know after five times or after six or anything like that. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I used this analogy before, but it's kind of like hitting um, a nail with a hammer. And, um, you know, if I was, you know, I haven't done that for a while, but if I was just to pick up a nail and then hit it with a hammer straight away, I'd probably miss or it'd probably just not be, you know, um, it'd just be like a little bit off. But as you repeat that motion, your, your brain, you build a bit of muscle memory. And um, when you draw a line, suddenly you don't have to think, as much, um, how much pressure you're going to put on the paper, how fast you have to move the pen. A lot of memory actually is unconscious and it's not something that, um, it's like driving a car, right? You're not sitting there um, and thinking exactly what you're doing. You're not, you know, I've got to press the accelerator now, I've got to do, you know, a lot of it becomes automatic after all. Once you've simulated that 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 information, um, your, 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 your hand will just know what to do. But a few ways that you, uh, one thing I, I can suggest um, for you to do is um, <clears throat> the pen is just draw, grab a bit of paper, hang on, paper to demonstrate, um, this is dried, I think that's dried, grab a bit of paper and um, what you can do is you can just do this sort of thing, just lines in one direction, draw you know, rectangles. You know, you can draw it using the back of the pen even, like that. And press harder. Um, doing stuff like this, I know it looks kind of a bit pointless and um, doesn't look very impressive, but it builds up that, I guess, that muscle memory so that you have more confidence. If you ever need to draw a triangle, you know, rooftop, that you can do it with a lot more confidence rather than you know just really having to think about it the more you practice these sort of marks um the better i scribble and my i've got sketchbooks that's that are just filled with garbage um <laughs> you know even little swirls and things like that it's a way to just uh, train yourself to um it's just kind of like when you're playing tennis or something like that learning how to hold a racket and learning um how to swing a certain way it's the same thing but with fine motor control we're using your, your fingers your hands it's the only way that you can get better is just by continually continually doing it um you know look at that the hatching i've got that hatching really close there like that very, very like close lines, and then you want to might want to do some in the opposite direction, like this, like that. 
So if you look really closely, you can get these sort of little hatch lines um, and practice doing that. So um, I hope that hope that helps. And it, the, the awesome thanks for the tips uh, from and the name is just Nikki. That's how you pronounce it. Okay, thanks for um, thanks for clearing clearing that up. Uh, I, I I tend to butcher people's names, but um, thank you. Do want to get it right? Uh, so yeah, give me one moment. I'm gonna get a get a quick drink, and I'll be back to do the second one. Okay, uh, we're gonna go give this a second go now. Um, Adam, great tips, does uh, much appreciated. Thanks, Adam. Did you really give this one? A, did you really give this one a try? <laughs> Adam's um, Adam's one of my friends uh, from Perth. We both moved to Melbourne, so he's watching along. He's watching along as well. But I'm uh, I'm, I'm uh, questioning whether he's uh, he's actually doing it sketching along <laughs> but uh, if you are that's great um, but thanks for watching appreciate it Beth Beth Planky you are 15 hours ahead of me chances are I will have to catch up most of your videos and repeat not in real time I love the way you break things down thanks appreciate it Beth and look I, I don't think uh, you know I, I don't think I am uh, I, I I think I'm an okay artist. In my mind, I think I'm an okay artist. But um, if I can explain something to you guys that uh, makes it easier for you as a beginner to uh, pick up um, pick up a brush, pick up a pen or a pencil and draw, um, you know, I'm happy that that I'm I'm truly happy. So uh, this is practice for me as well. Um, so appreciate it, Beth. You eating macas tonight? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know what? I, I have some. Um, I was gonna make some fried rice, and I had the I have the the rice and like the the rice cooker. And once this is done, probably gonna probably gonna make some something quick, something quick and easy for tonight. Um, yeah. Or, or you know what? Maybe I might do macas. <laughs> Um, for you guys watching over in the States, Maccas is just what we call McDonald's over here. Um, yeah. Have a short form for everything. Um, Nikki, do you ever do Inktober? Uh, I do. I, I did try, I can't remember it was last year. Yeah, well, I, I gave it a try last year. Um but I only managed to get through about five to 10 days of, of it. At that time, I'd only just started YouTube. And what I was trying to do was to, to, to make a video, an Inktober video every day. And on top of that, do like a one or two other videos. And I think just burnt myself out, got really um, demotivated. I didn't really want to do it anymore after 10 days. And I thought, well, you, you know, I don't want to completely burn myself out. So I just stopped and I ended up, uh, just doing like one video a week or something like that but it's it's really good if you have a chance to you don't even you don't have to do stuff like this just do something really simple a simple drawing um it could be like a car it could be um I, I don't know like a like an insect or like an animal or something like that something really quick um something uh, if you practice every day and sort of not just practicing every day but it's People often don't talk about consciously practicing, consciously um, understanding what you're what you're doing, um, and, and it's just about once you finish your painting, you're reviewing what you've done, what you could, what you've done well, and what you could improve for uh, next time. Because if you don't go through that stage of understanding that, then you're always going to use the same methods 
and reproduce the same results. And uh, so being conscious and having that level of introspection to sort of look, um, for example, I'll go here and I'll say, um, you know, this the, the dome is just a little bit kind of wonky here at the bottom. I we'll probably need to improve that. Some of these overlapping shapes don't make sense here as well. So I can go through and improve that. I like the orange. I, I like this orange and um, the shadows, the, the sh pattern of the shadows. That looks nice. So kind of just doing that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, okay. Adam, I'm off. Call you if I'm in the city during your usual waking hours. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for thanks for watching. Now let's go ahead and do this next one pretty quickly. I'm going to try to speed this one up, guys. I'm uh, getting hungry, but I did say I did say that I'd do two, and um, and I want to I want to give this one a try as well. Just lower that size of the picture uh, i can't enlarge this without it overlapping with everything so if you're watching at home uh, make sure you go to the discussions or the chats and i've pinned up the actual photograph in there so you can pick that out and um and pick out the chat uh sorry you can pick out the, the the photograph uploaded photograph to the in the chat that's what i'm trying to say okay fantastic and uh, Philip, found you found my red bubble page. <laughs> oh, great! I'm not sending. Um, oh, that's that's nice of you. Um, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I upload a whole bunch of my artwork in there when I when I get time. It's actually quite a frustrating process. You're going, um, and if anyone out there is is sort of an artist looking to understand how to um sell prints uh sell your artwork and stuff like that i know a little bit about that i'm not i'm definitely not an expert but uh, if you ever need help with that kind of stuff just reach out to me because i found it really difficult in the beginning to 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 understand how it works um and i reached out to a few people a couple of artists some um, australian artists and i never heard back um probably busy but you know Reach out if you if you ever wondering that one day because um, soon enough, you know, years from now you'll be you'll be drawing and painting really well and you might perhaps think of that. So uh, this is this is an interesting scene um, somewhere in Japan. I don't know exactly where in Japan, but I thought it was a pretty cool scene. It's really detailed. And how am I going to do this? Let's um, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and um, give this a try. And uh, I'll get started and I'll check the chats in a moment, guys. Because otherwise, you'll be looking at a blank sheet of paper for the next hour. Okay. What I want to do, line at the bottom here, where the bottom of the buildings are, that building on the right hand side, that temple, it stops, goes all across here, stops around about here. We have got. A whole bunch of figures in this scene and we want to get them in um, but I also am wary to make sure that I've got in you know the general heights and stuff like that of these buildings in the background this uh, temple so I'm gonna start with a bit of line work here in the background and I'm turning the pen on the side by turning the pen on the side, you're able to get in more uh, lighter marks on the paper, okay, so that you're not essentially um, you're just grazing that paper. Really, oh, there's another building here. I never noticed that um, section here, like that. There, this section, like that. I love, I love the shape of these buildings. Um, just look. Incredible, the probably got to read up a bit more about the architecture and um, but it's just so beautiful, it's made of wood. Uh, right, we're gonna go, uh, 
here, there, there. What am I doing? Simplify this down. Now, I've got that the shape of these buildings in the background in. Um, I want to get in this really big building as well, um, which kind of comes halfway through the the, the scene, but I, I've, I've um, gone over a little bit, but that's okay. Comes out here. Actually, I'm like trying to figure out how far we need to get it out. You know, like that. I think. Something like that. There. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm not doing this too dark is because I want to put in some of these people first. Okay. So, um, yeah. And if we do the buildings first, we're just not going to overlap. It's going to overlap too much. Head of a figure here. Let's put another head of this one here. Holding the pen pretty light as well. It's going to be another another person just walking um, here. Make sure the heads are roughly around the same height as well. Okay, there we go. And there's a bit of this person's got his arm here. And um, looks like he's got a just a sort of vest or something like that. And a little satchel like that. Um, some hair like this. There, oops, a bit more hair. Okay, there and legs that just almost disappear out of the, the scene down the bottom. I'm not going to fuss with that too much. Here's another person kind of with the back turned. Um, again, I'm just going to simplify this down like that here. Um, we've got another person here starting with the head and maybe it looks like they've got a hoodie or something on like this. And uh, there, look at that, just a dress. And, Legs just coming out like that. There, um, another person here, head and the, the body kind of like this. Maybe they're wearing a suit um, or something like that. Here, the legs coming down like this, one in front of the other, like that. Okay, yeah. another one. Um, and I'm just going to quickly look at the chats again. Um, Jill, Jill's, uh, Jill Driscoll's just joined. Welcome, Jill. Only just started on the second one, so uh, you can probably catch up. I'm, I'm doing this one a little, uh, probably a bit quicker than the other one, so I can get some dinner. But I'll still go through pretty much my whole process. Nikki is also saying that would be great if I could do a video on how to do prints. Yeah, uh, I I know I only know how to um, really basic stuff like the websites. Uh, some some of the so there's Redbubble, there's Society Six, and you basically um, if you can scan, you've got a scanner to scan your artwork, or you've got a, um, a decent camera to take a picture of, of one. I can show you. Yeah, I can do a, a quick video on how to on, on how to do that. Uh, how to put them up. Um, it's a very low effort if you're trying to um, sell a few prints online. Um, all you got to do is just basically scan and upload um, and then you can share the link with your um, on your on your social media, that kind of thing website. Um, and uh, fantastic. Thanks, Philip. <laughs> really appreciate really appreciate your your support. Um, yeah, I don't upload all my stuff on there as well. So if there's something that you see me paint and you want me to upload it, just let me know. Um, yeah, you can. I can upload it too, because uh, I don't upload everything. It's actually a pain to to the process. It's a bit annoying. You got to uh, come up with all these keywords, and then you got to um, center all of the design so that if you know for shirts they show up in the right place. Um, so they're not kind of off center. Uh, so it takes a little while to upload one. So yeah, yeah. I appreciate you having a look, Nikki, as well. Um, yeah, even if it's just to see how I how I set it up. Um, I do make a few sales every every now and then, but not not a a whole not a whole lot. Um, in fact, most of the stuff that if I do sell things, it's it's mainly just like courses or people um, donating. 
um, donating when, when I'm um, doing these videos. So um, yeah, if it happens, it's great. If it doesn't, then, you know, I've, you know, I've got lots of time to, to figure it out. Um, I think as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, um, it, you know, good things will happen. And um, just, uh, you know, as artists, just just try to be generous with the information that you give out um, as, as well. Uh, later on down the track, if you're teaching people stuff, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get back into it. Okay, more figures, more figures. This one here, let me just increase the size of the head a little bit like that. I was looking shorter. Um, another thing I can do is maybe put in a, a larger uh, figure like this, kind of walking into the scene um, like that, just walking into the scene. Mm. And down the bottom was doing something and we've got a bag across his back like that. Got the shirt coming out. He's just he's out the he's out of the way of the whole scene really. Um but a larger one like this, okay. Holding the pen kind of at the at the edge as well helps. Here we go. Look another one here. And a figure can just be like this. It doesn't even have to be too much detail look at that just a square and then we got a, a, a another leg coming out like that there this could be another person here just walking that way like that another one here when you put clothing and things like that on them they just look a lot more convincing you know this one looks i put this one on a bit of an angle as well looks like looks like um someone having a dance here in the background um that that you notice what happens when you step forward the foot that you're stepping forward on that that shoulder will come down slightly this is very exaggerated but that's how i do it and when i'm drawing this figure this one i haven't really done it he's maybe just standing completely upright there and there's another one here just behind two okay. a bit of a bit of um sketching make sure the figures are smaller as you move back as well the great thing about these references is that if you've got a lot of stuff going on um you can uh, you can basically pick and choose which elements you want to keep and which elements you don't want to keep so this could be like an arm here coming in like that shirt someone just coming into the scene out of the corner like that oops there put some more hair on him or her at like that just walking into that scene from the corner um more here a few little scribble scribbles and things another one here yeah overlapping figures are so important um this is going to give you just a sense of depth in what you're drawing as well i'm also trying to be a lot more looser and and things in here too. Bit of fun. Being over forward. There's a there's a lady here that's sort of walking around. Oh, I'm kind of sticking out like this. And uh, I like this I like this figure. I really like that figure. I'm gonna put that one in like this. Yeah, there we go. Someone else walking. Uh, maybe you put in an eye. Um oop. Some hair. You put the hair to the back, it's gonna look like they're walking forwards, yeah? You put the hair just on top, then it's gonna imply that they're um that it's just their face that's showing, meaning that they're walking um towards rather than into the scene. Okay. A bit more hair. It's a mess. A mess going on here. It's got a mullet. Um Let's have a look. Uh, great. 
And um, Philip, if um, got to, I, I don't think I, I don't think I've asked you. Where, whereabouts are you watching from? Um, are you watching from Australia as well? Or whereabouts? Whereabouts are you from? Never asked you. Um, you always seem to be up at the at the times that I'm up. Okay, let's get in some of these buildings, okay, so because uh, we'll be wait waiting around too long. Here's the top of one, like this. This one here, the rooftop, coming down, like that. Plays out at the bottom a little bit, okay, and that's the bottom of the roof. Then we have these four kind of, um, a bit more at the bottom here sort of underneath these four poles wooden poles that hit the floor now the trick is we want to do the ones on the side first because if we do the ones on the side it's going to be a lot easier to get these ones uh drawn in with the right spacing rather than if you draw the ones well actually you can draw the ones in the middle that, that reasoning isn't that reasoning doesn't make sense but i tend to draw the ones on the on the sides first um you know, there's some little hole or something in there, a bit more in there. Now, at this point, you've got a choice to either sh do this, so basically just shade um, or hatch, okay? Or you can wait till later and do this with the watercolors, okay? We do need some darkness in there. Let's get in a few of these little lines that run down this. You notice as you reach the center, the line becomes straight, then starts going in the opposite direction, like this. Okay. Um, that's one, that one's done. Let's go ahead and draw this building over to the right hand side. It's very similar. It's just darkness underneath like that um, and then we've got this section here kind of just goes out of the scene I'm gonna have to extend it out a bit I, I again this is I made a mistake here this should be more towards the, the right so that's why I'm left with all a bit too much space okay some of this uh, pattern on the roof just going in one direction like this running out of space there and then we're going to get in some areas underneath, uh, essentially, of um, the dark, sort of these, this darkness here. Um, and it finishes, maybe it finishes around about here. Let's, let's just have a play with it. I just want it to be dark in this section here. Okay, I've got this figure here. I don't want to go too close so that it, um, it just disappears. So keeping a bit of... Bit of light right there, but I'm gonna have to probably use some. Um, probably gonna have to use a bit of white gouache or something to, to um, and it pop out a bit more. Okay, this side now, yeah, yeah, line like that. Yeah, section here of this other part of a maybe a secondary temple, peeking out the corner, just like that. Curves more, these um, rooftops curve a lot more. Yeah, think of that. Just a couple of squares or something underneath, like that, to indicate uh, some doors. Uh, this one is, an, I don't, I'm not too happy with how I've done this one, but I have to make do. Now, the rooftop of this section here in the background. I'm going to go kind of following that same pattern so it's just starting to play out more as you hit the edges like that. Underneath, we're going to get in some darkness, some little windows here, similar to the other side. Like that. Okay, and um, follow that in. Remember, if you're watching at home, take your time with this as well, in terms of like how much detail you want in there. Don't you need to sort of rush and make it a quick line. Now this is going to be this big temple here. Now this is um, 
it's gonna be challenging. I don't know how. Um, we're gonna put in. You know what we'll do? We'll get in the poles um, first. But I want to just draw in some of these little perspective lines coming in here, like this. Yeah, that just sort of disappear out the scene. There. Just a few of these will be enough. A few of these will be enough. That. Okay. One maybe coming in here. So much detail so much detail in here and there's no way we're going to be able to get everything in let's have a look what we can do though so three um there's almost like three poles one two three they get sort of smaller as we go down. this one connects around about here um let me just get that one in first on the side it doesn't have to be perfect but a big one going all the way down Stick into the ground about there. That there we go. That's one. Um one there. Let's get the second one in roughly about here. Okay. And it's gonna be a little bit thinner than that one because we're moving away the scene. Our last one here. This there we go. As we move down and um what is this? This is an area some rope or something like that there. Yes, um, it's amazing just the amount of complexity in here. Well, we just put the poles in, let's just put the poles in first. And then we know we've got a couple of planks of wood or something running across the rooftop like that. There. Okay, this section it comes in like that. There, and then comes downwards. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. The more of these wooden planks just moving across the rooftops like that. Um, great. Um, and Angie, Angie McCormick says, awesome, just started getting ready for work so can't watch long so glad i can see you drawing today i have a vision issue and couldn't see the drawing while you were doing it friday or probably your saturday um yeah let me know if you have if you have that issue again um or, 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 if there's anything i can do i guess to help out um you, you know whether it be um i don't know increasing the contrast or something on the on the camera I know when I'm drawing in pencil, it's just so hard to do it. Uh, it's hard, so hard to see. So, yeah. Uh, this is all pretty dark in this section. It's all very, um, it's hard to see really what's going on in here. Okay, and I'm going to probably just reduce this down to some simple area of um, light and dark here. Do it there. Um, and this section is just all pretty much dark in this area here. Some hatching is in order. Some hatching. Um, might also get the hatching to run in the same direction like this. Do. Okay. Great. Runs out there. Also other objects. I don't even know what this is. There's something there, some kind of circular object. But it, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to get it in anyway. Because it it's going to create more interest in here. Rather than ha having uh, just a completely blank space in behind. There's, uh, behind. So there's even a, a, a... There's even a... a sort of building behind there like that down and you know what let's put in some more people in here um another trick you can do to avoid having to add too much in the background okay that's gonna have to end end this somewhere where that okay 
people here in the distance. Okay, a few more. That. Okay. Uh, oh, here's a bit. Draw a line coming out here. That. These. These. This is. Um, Lot going on. Let's just draw a few more lines coming down, and I'm gonna just uh, see if we simplify this a bit more. Normally, in watercolors, I just do all this in one big mass. When you do, when you're going in with pen, I think you've got to be more, uh, got to define a bit more, rather than have a some scribble in there. Um. Gonna bring this down like that. That section come out uh, like that. There we go. That looks a bit better. Um, and this is where we can start to define things a little bit more. So the pillar joins in up here. Got sort of these sections like that. Little. Little bit sections there, and we've got. See how can I how can I simplify this? Let's put this in kind of like as a triangular shape like that. Looking. Okay, that's better. It should be more. It should be uh, 180 degrees. Playing tricks on me. These top parts are 180 degrees, just completely straight. And on the bottom, you've got these like bits that shut out like that. I'm simplifying this a lot. That. They are quite dark as well. He's supporting, uh, they kind of support um, the edges of the roof. Like, on the edges of the roof. Mm. Wow. Comes up like this. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to try to get in some of these lines as well. This. There. Mm, they actually kind of carry along further down. Just redo this bit, let that go all the way down like that. Um, and then the edges. Just going to do some squiggly, squiggly sort of work. Sections here. And um, squiggly bits, pieces here. Straight lines. Just doing some 180 degree lines like that. There. Um, maybe another row of them further down here. I'm going to turn my paper on a slight angle. I think it would make it easier. Just make do like this. But if you turn your paper on a slight angle, I think you could make it easier for you for yourself. Go. Okay. Some of that in there. Um. There's even these sort of vertical ones that just join up like this. Oops, it's going to come down. That. There we go. Uh, great. Some little things here. 
All right. Uh, I think I will stop with. Oh, forgotten to put in this side of the the the, the building, uh, the temple. So let's let's um, let's work on this. Now we need to put in one, two, three, four layers until it kind of hits the top here. Um, and the the top section sort of goes off. Amazing. Um, let's draw the top here like that, like that, and like that. I'm going to separate. I want four. Um, no, hang on. There's yeah. There's four after this section here, which is uh. Yeah, no. So after this, this bit here, it's four, one, two, so you probably do the middle section like that, three, four. So we've got um, the sections of roughly where the, the, roofs, the roof bits begin. One, two, three, four. And that's the top bit there. Okay, um, so I'm gonna get in and about the bottom part. Yeah, of that 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 um floor of the pool, and um the the way the roofs sort of just kind of out like that, they fly out to the side and then duck behind, come back in again. It's beautiful. Look at that. So much going on. Really, so much going on in here. So that's another section. That's one. Expand that out a bit more like that. Um, the second one I'm going to do kind of the same, just imitate that one. Yeah. That. In. That. Third one. I mean, the same like this. Cross. That. Fourth one, come out like this. Uh, in like that. Okay. There we go. Define inside a bit more. So much going on. I'm just going to have to, I'm probably just going to use the watercolors to get this all in in a, in a larger sort of fashion. Um, you can see parts of the, of the undersides of the roof of these areas. So I think the important thing is to have a bit more darkness on the top of the roof. The roofs of each floor, and then the bottom parts are going to be um, in here really light and um, have the orange in there. And then, of course, we've got some of the darkness coming up underneath the rooftops as well. So, I reckon I'll leave that, leave a lot of that for the, um, for the watercolors, okay? Um, but we'll just strengthen out the each floor a little bit first. Okay. Um, now, no, behind these, there's also some more contemporary buildings here as well. So there's one there, there's another one here as well. She fits quite well. Everything balances out. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Um, now. I'm going to color this in real quickly. And there's a few people still watching. If you if you're out there, let me know. Let me know how you're how you're doing. Um I I kind of struggled with drawing that last bit here. So let me know um how you how you're doing. Um do you need some extra help? I'm going to give in I'm going to start putting in a bit more color. Let's mix get myself started. Uh, with the painting, so 
I'm going to use a fair bit of orange and red for all this. And, um, let's go in here with the orange. And also got a number eight round brush. Orange, bit of red. I'm just going to go in like that. Okay. There. Okay. There. That. 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 Down. That. Um. The roofs, the rooftops. Um, I'm gonna put in a bit of neutral tint, a little bit of that, to mix in. Hopefully, and blend in nicely. So that it looks a bit more darker, especially on that right hand side, uh, like that. There. Okay. Blend that in, like that. There you go. Something like that. Got the orange still. And uh, some of that's going to just bring that a bit of it up there. Okay. Neutral tint. Here again. Now, underneath here, it starts getting a bit lighter actually because the sunlight's just hitting the roof. I'm going to use some yellow ochre in this rooftop, a bit of yellow ochre. Okay. Kind of mixed around with some of the other stuff. A bit of darker color here. Because I'm implying there's a shadow kind of cast there. Um, this thing in the background, this building in the background, I'm going to use some blue, just a tiny bit of blue in this section with some grey, um, like that. Put in a bit more warmth there, but not all too much. Here we go, a bit of yellow, a bit of yellow ochre for the rooftops. Um, now let's put in some orange, a bit of orange. Colors. Underneath there, we're really just looking at it as warm and cool colors and not fast, really. There we go, a bit more warmth there, even in here. Bits of that there. Um, plastic and um, top. What I was saying, just trying to get this whole shape in as quick as possible. Orange. We're using lots of orange today. There, and maybe some red in there too. Red, orange. And uh, bringing that all across. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is actually drop in some, some of the darker color later. But I, I'm trying to get in the orange bits first. Um, and then go in, in, uh, go in later with some of the neutral tint. Okay, here we go. Bring down this little pillar. I might even put in some bit of yellow in here as well. Yellow. Uh, mix that with some. This is some uh, burnt sienna. I just want to change it up a bit so we don't have all just the whole thing just showing up as orange. Okay, go. Orange, a bit more orange. Um, um, orange, yeah, the rooftops underneath, putting in some burnt sienna, a bit of burnt sienna, that color, um, the house kind of behind, I'm going to go with a bit of this grey, cool colour, something a bit cool over in the background. Um, that, but I think, already kind of mixed in and produced a bit of a greenish colour. Okay, put that in. Okay, I'm just cutting around the figures as well, so that we don't have them change and turn the same color um, and here we go I want to get in some dark bits and pieces so um, 
Look at that, just a few little bits here, and even on the tops of the roof down here, where it sort of touches onto the sky, is where I'm going to blend that in, get in a few of these little marks like that, go out a bit more underneath here. Uh, let's get in a few larger brush strokes running through that section. More of these vertical lines. Um, then we've also got these horizontal lines running, which I know we did these in the pen before, but we have to, I'm going to have to redo them a little bit like that. Get into wet. Okay. Here we go. Bring that down. Let that sort of melt in. Okay. Just make sure that this area is darker um, than the background areas. Some more darkness in here underneath the rooftops um, and just surrounding these orange um, sections as well. These orange sections of the poles. Um, there, there are actually some little highlights in here. Got to get them in. We'll make do. Um, the ground is going to be done just with some yellow ochre. I'm just picking up some warm color to drop in there, um, and sort of to cut around the figures a bit as well, uh, like this. Just a bit of warmth in the ground. Okay, might actually bring some more of this yellow in here. It's not saturated enough to my liking anyway. Especially here in the background, I'm gonna get a big shadow. Yeah, yeah, a bit more yellow. Go. Okay. Yeah. Um, too saturated, just dull it down with some yellow ochre or some grey on your palette. Um okay. Yeah, yeah. A bit more. Yeah. There we go. Um before we forget, we want to get the sky in, right? So little brush. I'm gonna mix up a purple, purplish colour, the sky. And maybe some more blue actually. It's way too we want it very light. Um just a light wash over the top of everything. Okay. Very light wash like that. Yeah. Some bits and pieces. We don't have to um, can leave some white in there as well. But that's pretty straightforward. Just a large mop brush that I'm using here. Get in a light wash. Blue sky. I'm using cerulean blue. Um, I've also got manganese blue hue. Trying that out. I've just got a bit of that left over. And I found it, a tube of it, in my, um, my art supplies, and it's, uh, I think it granulates. Let's, let's see how we go. So I'm just using some manganese blue hue. Is it going to do anything? I need this blue in here. We've got all this warm colors, all this warmth. Something's got to balance it out. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, then we can go into the figures. Let's get in some colors for the figures. This one, some blue again, a bit of that blue, manganese blue. Um, you know, this one might have a kind of a purple shirt or something here. Like that. Um, you don't have to color them all in. That one can just have like a white shirt and some darker pants, for example, like that. There. And, um... Just going to pick up a little bit of red, uh, red and uh, yellow ochre and see if I can get in some okay. There we go. The color in there. Okay, the rest of them, it's just all about um, picking out colors that you want to put in. It could be pink, okay. It could be you know, another color here. It could be green for this person. Um, 
bit of red or whatever. These, this one could just be pretty dark there, there. Actually, it doesn't matter all that much here because all these people are, are pretty much um, under shadow unless we want to change the shadow. Um, I think what I'll do is I might actually change the shadow so that it kind of comes out like this so that we've got some of them still in the light. Otherwise, we're going to end up with this mass, mass of um, dark figures, which I don't want. I want some variation. Okay. The variation. And a bit of color here. Underneath the building here, we just want it to be darker. Um, look, we've also you know, I've forgotten to get in a bit of a darkness on the poles. Um, and just put in a bit of dark color there. That and um, you know, things like here, like underneath the rooftops, that's going to be there's going to be darkness there. Bit of darkness there, a bit of darkness underneath here. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on with this building here in the background, but there's a few bits and pieces like that. A bit of darkness here, you know, just where you think you want to further indicate what's going on that's what that's what you need to do just darken off bits and pieces that on that right hand side of this areas of the, the the temple up um another thing we can do as well we can actually go back in with the pen later get in some more details even a white pen you can go through get in a bit of that highlights running through there um there we go we'll darken some of these areas this that this is just neutral tint i'm using just almost pure neutral tint underneath to, to get more contrast there we don't have any really dark colors uh, running through here, but we do we need some more of them, especially inside this temple here on the left. Here is top as well. Dark as you get it. Yeah. Okay, let me just check the chats. Um, great, I think we've we've still got a few people watching along. Eight um, on Facebook. Um, let me know. Let me know how you're going. I sort of I got to check on everyone. There you go. Uh, Darken off a bit here at the bottom. Um, okay. But apart from that, I'm going to give this a quick dry. And we'll finish it off with the shadows. Okay, that is all right off now. Uh, Philip, still watching along. Excellent. Philip, you're doing well. Um, how long has it been? I don't even know how long we've been streaming for. Probably two hours or so. Uh, 
I would have never been brave enough to use these colors on my own, but you've shown me they fit in perfectly. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, sometimes these really bright colors, um, we get afraid to use them because, uh, yeah, they pop out of the page so much. Um, they pop out of the page so much, but uh, actually when they dry, they tend to look a bit more subdued. And when you add a bit of that neutral tint, you kind of you're always adjusting things. I find in watercolors, you're always just adjusting to make things. That's oh, too saturated. We we'll add some neutral tint. We we'll add some gray. Um, three hours, Tanya. Yeah, geez. Um, oh, you're right. Yeah, I did. I started at seven o'clock. Okay. Um, so guys, I'm going to show you the last bit, and I'm probably going to head off. So this is this is the the uh, one of the important bits where we're just trying to put in a the the, the shadow that runs across the uh, ground, um, runs across the ground. Um, Nikki uh, saying once again, beautiful work. Can you do some quick sketchbook tours one day? Sure. Um, do sketchbook tours. Do you mean do you mean what I did at the start of this? Um, at the start of this video, so where I sort of just went through my sketchbooks and and how I um and what I did for each one, or, or do you mean like a do do, do you mean like an in person one where we all you know meet up in Melbourne or somewhere and we do some uh, do some sketching outdoors because that would be pretty cool as well. Once all this stuff, once the lockdown finishes, uh, I don't know. It just keeps going on forever, doesn't it? Um. Yeah, I don't know if you were around at the start of this video, but I actually, I made this sketchbook myself. Um, so if you, if you want to know how I made this sketchbook, it only cost me like $8 to make it um, from good watercolor paper as well. Just check back near the beginning of the video after all the, the sketchbook stuff that I was talking about, sketchbook tour, and um, I'll show you how to do it. So, righto. Uh, shadows, guys, shadows. Um, now we will go and I'm going to use, I'm going to use a flat brush, maybe. I'm going to decide what to do. Should I use a flat brush or use a round brush to do this? I reckon I'll use the round brush. Okay. Um, neutral tint. Just mixing up a bit of neutral tint here. And I want to make this a kind of a blue base neutral tint. So make sure you add some more blue into that. Now, if you don't have neutral tint, just mix up some gray color. Gray, just with all, mix all your three primary colors, red, green, sorry, red, yellow, blue. I need to have some dinner. I've gotten my primaries and you'll get a gray. And then you want to add in a little bit more blue. So it has a blue bias. And I'm not saying that because we want um, just a bit more of a blue shadow, a darker sort of blue shadow. So look, let's go across. I'm going to, we're going to have to be bold here. Um, there, there. and. Have a sort of the uh, maybe an area of the building that just cuts across like this. We have to be have to be sharp, sort of. Uh, yeah, cuts across there, going on. You know, crossing over some of these figures. That okay. That's it. That's your shadow. Now we might have a bit here of the other building that's casting a bit of a shadow, but I wanted to leave more light on there. So we don't have all, hmm. even this guy, I'm going to have to put in a bit of darkness on top of him as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think this is a bit dark, but what we'll do in the moment is we'll actually add in a little bit more uh, color and a little bit more darkness to the legs of these figures so that they also sort of stick out. So maybe let this area dry a little bit first. It does look a bit, it does look awfully dark, but we'll see in just a moment, we'll bring, we'll bring out those figures again. Um, okay. Uh, Leah, Leah, it's quite surprising. <clears throat> it's quite surprising how light the dark shadows, uh, shadow color gets after it dries. The color is so dark when applying at the start. Yeah, it's it's um it, it's amazing, and it's and then it becomes so easy to um think you've gone too dark, 
Um, so you, you kind of got to just estimate how it's going to look. Yes, how, how it's going to look afterwards. Um, yeah, so it does always dry a little bit, a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to dry this off real quickly and then I'll add in the last bit, everyone. Um, but the important thing I'm trying to do is this shadow can't just come out of, of nowhere. So it's kind of got to join on a little bit, the buildings and things. So if you see here, you know, I'm bringing it up um, in little sections there. It doesn't just all of a sudden sort of just uh, just start because in in the painting I think it's important to join everything join everything on each other. So uh, little little dry off and I'll f and we'll finish it off with the legs and things like that. Okay, uh, Nikki, I didn't see the beginning. Just to look through your finished sketchbooks, uh, a flick through. I'll have a look at the beginning to see. Yeah, it's at the beginning of the video. Um, beginning of the video just after. Oh, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, the, the whole beginning of the video is actually the, the sketchbook tour. And then afterwards, I'll show you how um, just this sketchbook that I, that I made. I'll show you how to make it, but I'll give you a few tips. Um, it's actually pretty easy uh, you know, for someone who... Someone like me who has not a clue how to sew, um, if I can do it, you guys would be fine. Um, I buy my watercolor paper in sheets. Some people buy them in rolls, but I, I don't don't use that much watercolor paper to warrant buying like a, a gigantic roll of it. Um, gigantic roll of it. But if you have uh, a sheet um, of water. If you buy these watercolor sheets, like in packs of ten, they cost about eighty bucks um, over here in Australia. Anyway, it's about eighty bucks, but that that will last you. I mean, if you paint as much as me, that will last you about a year, um, or maybe maybe not a year, but I'm, I'm exaggerating. Uh, but but really really long time, especially if you paint small, because this whole sketchbook, which has uh, fourteen to sixteen pages, is just made out of one one watercolor sheet of paper, seventy six. 56 centimeters um normally when you go to these a lot of these suppliers um companies they'll just yeah they'll just put it together for you and charge you like 60 bucks for it you make it yourself now that the the um the convenience of just buying a sketchbook uh, for 60 bucks you know can't beat that as well so there, there are some great sketchbooks and stuff out there i have some etcher ones they send me them for free um i got one that I filled up, that was the one I started uh, painting with. That one's really good. But again, it comes down to, to your budget and um, they, they are pretty, they can be pretty pricey for some people out there. So um, this is just a way, I'm just showing you guys a way to, to be able to, to make your own sketchbook and uh, for the price of a meal, basically. So anyway, I'm gonna put in the last parts of this and I'm gonna head off something to eat. Now, neutral tint. I'm just going to drop that in the legs of these of some of these figures, especially these ones here in the darkness, like that. Um, and th the reason I'm doing this is just so that it helps to anchor them a bit to the ground. Because at the moment, they're they're just looking a bit flimsy, like they're just uh, standing around doing not all that much. But they're not really anchored to the ground. So this this little bit of dark color here, and you know, even getting the shadow, a little bit of a shadow running behind them on the ground like that, makes such a difference and look more convincing. Okay, make sure the shadows all run in the same direction as well. Don't um like this big shadow of that building you have to run in that same direction otherwise it's going to look funny turn this real quickly yeah. 
bit of legs for this this uh, belly here. Some more legs for this these two at the back there, and um, we are pretty much done. I mean, that for the rest of it, you know, there's a few things you can do. You can add like bags and. Look at that, that looks like he's holding a bag. Tourist or something. Um, you can put in a bit more detail for the, the heads. A um, bit of hair on them. Well, for example, like this, the hair on. Okay. But apart from that, we're pretty much, we're pretty much done. But, you know, the, the rest of it is just up to you how much detailing you want to put in. I often also go into some of these bits here, start doing things like adding in little lines and detail, just like this. This is what I do off the camera if I have a bit of time um, to further emphasize light and dark in these sections. So I will pretty much end it here. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the chats. Um, how did you find how did you find the session? Um, was it helpful? Uh, was there something that I could have done better, or or what would you like to? Uh, what did you like about it? If you enjoyed it, um, let me know. Um, love to hear your love to hear your comments and and also if if you could. You know, if you did like it, just share it around a bit as well. That kind of helps me get out there. Uh, what a website! Well, it's um, watercolormentor.com. Um, I ended up just choosing that name, a bit of a moniker, when I started off getting a bit more serious. My videos and my art, be about a year and a bit ago. Um, so. Um, love to hear from you. Love to hear from you all. Uh, everything, you know, I have courses as well, but pretty much everything I, I, I put in those courses, that it's, it's the same stuff as here, but I just, you know, I just deal with different subjects, just tackle different subjects, essentially. But it's, uh, all the knowledge is available here for free. I follow the same process with everything I paint. Um, nothing really changes um apart from the you know sometimes you have to you, you know certain subjects i might uh, change a technique that i use here or there but apart from that all the same paint from light to dark deal with the big shapes first um yeah and i might put in a few little little birds let's you know again this really helps to break up the sky keep them varied as well some here and i don't mind this one actually um there's a i think because i kind of um try to do it quicker as well that there's a kind of um a charm to it so it goes to show uh, sometimes things just work out the end um so i'll quickly go through the comments really appreciate all all the feedback uh youtube uh let me have a look um, another great live my mentor uh we <laughs> strive for more salute you <laughs> thanks for your time efforts and knowledge um <laughs> um thanks philip and um thanks for your time as well for sticking around and um uh you know I, I always try my best to make sure you guys uh yeah just get get some value out of this and you know any kind of feedback i don't care whether it's positive negative whatever um that can help me improve and um to help you more just let me know Great workshop, Darren. Thank you. Thank you, Nige. Uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, please post your your artwork as well. Check on the the in the group. Um, we've got a couple of groups that you can post the, the artwork on. Uh, Watercolor beginners, and there's also the Watercolor Mentor community, which is just 
people, um, essentially just people who have viewed these uh, live demos and posted artwork. We'd really like to see uh, what you come up with. I'll repost it as well on the page um, so you can get a few more views uh, too. Uh, if you've made it through to the end, fantastic, well done. Um, you, you know, I salute you. And um, let's have a look who else. Philip, yes, it was very, it was helpful. And yes, I enjoyed it uh, immensely at that. My only critique, and I know that it's only my company help, is the time. It was 3.30 a.m. here, but holy, by holy, I made it. <laughs> because I think your channel is that good to wake up for. I also know you can't make everyone in the world happy. You're amazing, and I greatly value your time. Thanks so much, Phil. I, I, it, it really um, makes it so worthwhile, uh, me doing this and spending my time here, when I'm just reading um, comments like that. Uh, the, the amount of satisfaction that I get from doing this, I don't think I've really felt that before. Um, yeah, in, in a lot of, especially a lot of my, my kind of working, um, working life, my, my nine to five and stuff like that. Um, when you, you know, when you're doing something you love and, um, you can help people, uh, you know, oh, for me, I guess, help people to paint. Um, I just, yeah, you just can't beat that. So I'm really happy and, um, really appreciate, um, that, that I can be here and, and sort of providing this sort of content. Uh, Tanya, 10W, thanks. Enjoyed watching something I would never have considered trying. Enjoy dinner. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. And um, also a few chats over in um, Facebook. Leah, Leah, the, the, the font's real small. Uh, kind of wind, Winfudel. Um, thanks, Leah. And um, Dion, Dion, thanks, Dion, for coming along. And True Vivian, thank you very much for sharing. Your painting is wonderful. Appreciate you all being here. And um, there is another class, another workshop I'm running again on Saturday. Um, haven't painted those two. I, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, well, I have painted one of them, actually, the, the Venice one, but I haven't painted the other one. I just can't remember what, what I chose. I think it was a scene of... Uh, a village sort of in France but anyway um thanks everyone and I will see you see you next time um later